Hello and warm welcome to everyone. Trust everyone is doing good. Let's start a new module today. Let's start with data interpretation. Sure, all right. After some time, we'll also be doing logical reasoning. So we'll start with the data interpretation. I'll keep this lecture pretty simple. Reason being, this is the first lecture on data interpretation. We talk about three things. One, we learn one of the techniques, which is approximation. So how do we quickly do the approximation? Because when you write a couple of uh, entrance exams through the season, so there are certain entrance exams where there is a calculator, screen calculator, and there are entrance exams where there is no calculator. All right. So therefore, keeping these both types of tests in mind, we will also learn a technique of approximation. Not only that, Despite having given a calculator, it's not that for every simple calculation that we'll be using a calculator. So therefore, doing the mental approximations is pretty important because what is given to us is not a very comfortable calculator. It's a screen calculator. You got to move your mouse carefully on that particular calculator. You can't move too fast. You can't move too slow. Even to type a three-digit number or a four-digit, three-digit number by four-digit number, you got to be pressing seven digits there, right? Now using the screen calculator, definitely it is not a great proposition. Position. So therefore, keeping those, uh, those those constraints in mind, we don't use the calculator even if there is a screen calculator pretty often. We don't use it for quite often. So we use it once in a while, maybe all right now to do a rest to our brain, to give a rest to our brain or it is very cumbersome calculation unless it is something of that nature. We generally don't use the calculator. So keeping that in mind, we learn at least one technique. Let's learn approximations as we go through this data interpretation series. It's a series of four to five lectures. So as I take you through this series of four to five lectures, that's when we'll discuss further about so what are the different ways of doing the calculations etc right so that's an overview of what we are going to do through this data interpretation series as well as what we are going to do learn today right let me tell you again so we are going to learn a couple of techniques of approximation today and then we'll be looking at uh, we'll be looking we'll, we'll be looking at the very fundamentals of data interpretation okay i'm sure all right now most of you would be knowing that data is represented in various forms so we'll talk about it so you would be definitely aware of it because some of the data interpretations data interpretation starts in the primary school if i'm not wrong representation of the data starts very much in the primary school there will be one chapter dedicated to data presentations so data basic basically data based questions you always find that and by the time you go to high school more or less you would be exposed to quite a few possible types of graphs therefore let me not uh, let, uh, let me not get into two basics of how the graphs look like etc so on this note let's get started let's get started so let me tell you what is the scope of these particular uh, what is the scope of this particular area of study let's start with what is the scope let some of the entrance exams or let know where the data interpretation is involved and right, i'm not talking about logical reasoning logical reasoning is another skill i'm talking about the data interpretation as a skill right so as you understand these are the most favored exam more favored exams in a particular season right now we write most of the test takers take cat and nmat ift zag snap mhct okay i'm definitely not saying that they don't write this exams like this so they do they do i'm saying that okay now these are some of the major exams i'm talking about i do understand that okay some of us will be taking cmat mat or it can be tisnet or you know it could be my cat that is for my car right now, so we'll be writing those exams as well it's not an exhaustive list that i have written here i have written now let now some of the prominent exams right okay now considering this what is the weightage what is the scope of this in the inter various entrance exams that you take you can say that on an average 15 to 20 percent so whichever the paper that you kind of talk about the weightage should be somewhere between 15 to 20 percent maybe less, no, somewhere between 15 to 20 percent based on that year's matrix and the packaging of various the all of the packaging of the exams so let's keep it in mind 15 percent 20 percent is a big number or that's a big number i can't ignore 15 to 20 percent of it with respect to di i I'm not combining LR into it. I'm talking only about the data interpretation part, right? So I'm, I'm not talking about the LR. LR also has the similar kind of weightage, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but has the similar kind of weightage. So let's keep it in mind that 15 to 20% is the data interpretation. 
And trust me, this is one of the simplest skills to develop, unlike quant or uh, uh, verbal. So this is one of the very, very simple skills to develop and it doesn't have a base of its own. So it derives certain concepts from other areas of quantitative ability. We'll talk about it. But trust me, one thing is for sure, this is one of the simplest skills to develop. It doesn't take much time. It, it requires just all it now, just about a dozen odd hours from your end, maybe two dozen hours. In the sense, if you are spending about 25 hours on data interpretation, trust me your skills start maturing but the same 25 hours in quant I say that okay you would be nowhere in the picture 25 hours is way too less on the quant whereas if you look from the data interpretation perspective let trust me all in all about 25 hours of good effort from your end not the input what I'm talking is an input here so what I'm saying here is okay if you put your effort from your end maybe about 25 hours trust me the skill starts maturing you find the difference that's what I mean right so therefore therefore I say that it's one of the simplest skills so same 25 hours in re re on reading comprehension, you will be nowhere in the picture. 25 hours is too less an effort. Okay, unless you've been a voracious reader, you've been having the habit of reading right from the age 6 years or 8, 10 years, whatever it is, for informative years. So otherwise the data reading comprehension skills take some time to mature. Okay, so therefore keep that in mind. Let's keep this in mind. Doing it is simple. Let us not neglect. <clears throat> Let's pay that much more attention in those limited hours. So here we are. Here we are. Some of the prerequisites. So I expect that, okay, we are all comfortable with the tables till 20 because I know that, okay, we all would be coming from different boards. Some of the boards encourage students to learn tables only till 9 or 10. Some of the boards may be up to 12. There are some boards up to 20. So I'll let know whichever the way it is. I want you to be comfortable with the tables till 20. Please watch my video on percentages 1 where I spoke about what is the importance of these things. The second point as well, I talked about it in the percentage one, where the percentage calculation, that is nothing but percentage fraction equivalent, that is one by two is 50%, one by three, 33.33%. Likewise, I asked you to learn till one by 25. If you are new to this, and if you are attending the DI, DI straight away, and you are not aware of all it, what I'm talking here. So what are the first and the second point? Please go back to the percentage one lecture. That video should be available on the YouTube. Take a look at that and then you'll, you'll understand it in much more detail about what I'm talking here, right? And then we'll talk about approximations today. The ratios, yes, I previously, just about last to last week, I did a lecture on ratios. So that also helps a little bit out here. Speed calculation techniques, if you know some techniques of speed calculation that is learned previously would definitely help, which means faster additions will help, faster subtractions will help, ability to multiply quickly will definitely help. All right, some of these things will definitely put you in comfort because these are the raw ingredients required for a DI. These are some of the raw ingredients. All right, now, so therefore, so the ensure that, okay, the raw ingredients are in place in the sense, hey, I'm not good at addition. I'm not good at subtraction. Ensure that you practice 15 minutes a day for about next 10 or 15 days through this particular month. So if you just practice a couple of addition, subtraction, multiplication, some of these things for the next, next maybe about 10, 10 days. I'm not saying that whole 10 days we'll be doing this. I'm saying 15 minutes a day, a drill of 15 minutes, a warm up of 15 minutes. Trust me, you would be much more quicker. All right, your efficiency will become into three times or into five times. Yes, all right, no, because if you are not doing, been doing concentrating on addition, subtraction, multiplication for some time, you'll be out of form. That's it. Hey, what I mean by doing the drill for 15 minutes for about next two weeks, I meant that, okay, get get back to the form. If you're out of form with respect to calculation in DI, it's very essential that you hit the form back again, right? That's very important there. Okay, so what are, what are the things? What are the things all right now I need to be a little knowledgeable about? You, your comfort with the tables, which means the data represented in the tables, rows and columns, the data represented in the bar graphs, I'm sure all right now, so you'd be comfortable with all of this. What As I'm telling these number of words, you are, you are able to recall what I'm talking about. The types of bar graphs, the types of line graphs, all right, and the pie charts. I hope you are getting those pictures in your mind as I'm talking, because all this, all these, these four are the very primary ways of representing the data. Pretty primary, pretty elementary way of representing the data. That is, the data represented in the form of a table, data represented in the form of a table, or data represented in the form of the bar graph, represented in the form of the line graph, represented in the form of pie chart. Or pretty elementary. What do you mean by mixed graph? Sometimes one graph may not be enough. Therefore, you represent part of the graph, part of the data. In form of table, a part of the data maybe in, in, in as, as a bar graph, right? A part of it. That's what we mean by the mixed graph, which are pretty fashionable, but pretty much in vogue, pretty much in style, right? And then sometimes the data will be in the form of a caselet. Caselet is what all it know the data may not be represented either as a either in the form of data might not be necessarily given in the form of 
or it necessarily given in necessarily necessarily given in the form of a bar graphs or line graph or any of the graphs. Instead, it would have been explained with the points one, two, three, four, five, six. They might have given it in the form of a points out there. That's quite possible, right? That's what we call by caselet. Sometimes the data written expressed in terms of sentences and words. So let we call this a caselet. Then logic based DI very important. This is only this is important. But if all this is on one side, this itself is on the other side. This itself is on the other side. So logic based DI. That's nothing but the reasoning based DI. In the sense, there will be some missing data there. There some information would be given. They want you to reason it out something before you go ahead and conclude and do the questions. So therefore, all it now that's a background. I expect that. What are the two backgrounds I expect? Number one, I expect that you are kind of under knowledgeable about some of the tables, percentage, fraction, equivalent, right? Some of these things. So I will teach you this approximations is what we'll discuss today. We'll try and take a look at approximations today, of course. Right, and then second thing is your understanding of the tables, bar graphs, etc. I'm sure right now all of you would be comfortable with these particular graphs. Of course, all right, as I go along, we'll also explore more about them, no doubt, no doubt. But I'm not really giving any background to this because I know that okay, you will understand the moment I show you a table, I know that you will be comfortable and you will understand about them. So, therefore, I don't have to pull out a separate time to help you to understand that. Right, so there we go. Okay, what I meant by percentage fraction equivalent, or right, technically, what I meant by percentage fraction equivalent is this or like this is what I mean by percentage fraction equivalent out here so given the sense that a hey, 5 by 12 a number like 5 by 5 by 11 is represented see there already right, 5 by 11 is represented I'm thinking that okay you all know what is the meaning of this 1 by 11 is 9.09 percent 5 by 11 is nothing but all right, now this is nothing but 45 point four or five percent all right i should be comfortably doing percentage fraction equivalent which is pretty important right similarly three by eight three by eight is thirty seven point five percent so i already taught you this in the percentage one lecture i suggest please go back to the percentage one lecture where we talked about the person fraction percentage drills we did there and we did the multiplier drills there all these things are very essential when we come here Right, 7 by 9, similarly 77.77% because you understand that 1 by 9 is 11.11%. 1 by 20 is 5%, therefore this is nothing but 65% and so on. I'm sure all, right, now all of you are comfortable what I'm doing here. All right, what I'm doing here, I'm sure all of you are comfortable. See, sometimes 7 by 12, all right, now let me take one of those examples here. 7 by 12, sometimes break them. All right, now numbers like this, break them. You already break them in a sense, break it in the mind. That's what I meant. Hey, you don't have to break it on the paper. You break it in the mind and do that. Hey, look, all right, 7 by 12 can be written as 6 by 12 plus 1 by 12. All right, 6 by 12 and 1 by 12. Because directly you might not know, remember 7 by 12, just in case you don't remember. Break it like this. Hey, what is this? 50%. Okay, what is 1 by 12? 8.33%. So this breaking can happen right in your mind. 50% and 8.33%. Therefore, you say that 58.33%. 7 by 12 is going to be 58.33%. No rocket science in this. All I'm trying to say is, hey, learn to break it. There is absolutely no problem there. Absolutely no problem. So similarly, if you have 13 by 15, so you can write 12 by 15, nice number. 12 by 15 and then you can consider 1 by 15 which becomes 13 by 15, right? So what is 12 by 15? 12 by 15 is 4 by 5 which is 80%. Right, which is 80% because that's 4 by 5, which is 80%. Yeah, what is 1 by 15? 1 by 15 is 6.66%. Therefore, you say that all in all, it is nothing but 86.66% or 67%. 86.66 or 67%. So whichever way, 13 by 15, you can break it in your mind as well. So all right, so whenever you have a little bit of a discomfort with respect to that, no problem. You break the things and then you can work it out there. Right, That also can be done. But the point is fraction percentage drill should be clear to each one of you. Okay, so these are all right, these are some of the backgrounds there. This is some of the backgrounds there. Second one, all of you know how to calculate percentage increase and percentage decrease. I'm pretty sure all, right, all of us know how to calculate this. So increase divided by original number. If I ask you what is the percentage increase between these two numbers? All right, percentage increase. Okay, sure, you can do by multipliers as well. Otherwise, all right, no percentage increase, you can get the difference. The difference is 55. The difference between 125 and 180. So, all right, this is the initial value. This is the initial value. This is the final value. What do you mean by percentage increase, friends? Final value minus initial value divided by initial value into 100, isn't it? Yeah, this is what we learn from schools. This is what we learn from schools. That also can be used. There's absolutely no worries. That's also fine. So, therefore, in this case, you say that hey, this is 55 divided 
divided by 125. Okay, what is 55 divided by 125? 11. All right, now you can can cut off both of them by 5. All right, 11 divided by 25. So this fine. All right, now what is 1 by 25? 4 percent. So therefore, what is 11 by 25? 44 percent. Right. I'm sure all right, all of you know how to work on these particular questions. There should not be any problem. Each one of them can be done like this. There can be a decrease as well. There can be a decrease as well. Just like you have an increase, sometimes there could be a decrease as well. Hey, even before you do them, hey, can I simplify and then I can do that? Yes, you can simplify and you can do the percentage calculation. What do you mean? You may say that, okay, this is, all right, now this first particular number, 35, 39 times, so because it comes in the table of 13, 13, 5 times. So 117, 265, there was a number 117 which went on to become 65. It's as good as writing the question 9 to 5. We learned all of this in the percentages time. We can simplify them because, all right, now because percentage decreases of, but this is going to be an abstract value. Therefore, can I simplify and do this? Yes. Instead of cutting off your already you cut it off here, then already now you see that 5 11 times and 5 25 times. Can I do it before the division? Of course, you can do it before. Therefore, that is also fine. Okay, what is the decrease? Therefore, the decrease is 4 4 divided by 9. Right? That is, there is an initial value, this is the final value. So what is the percentage decrease? Initial value minus final value divided by initial value into 100, right? So therefore, 4 by 9, which is nothing but 44.44%. .44%. It's nothing but 44.44%. Simple, okay. Just a recall, just a recall from your percentages. Why? Because all right now, sometimes we go on to use it. We go on to use it. Therefore, all this was done during the percentage. I'm just kind kind of like, you know, reiterating those facts so that you are kind of clear about them. Okay, let's come back here. Let's come back here. Let's learn some of the pre approximations here. Let's let's do this for maybe about 15-20 minutes before we get on to the GI. Let's try and consider how we do them. Look, all right now, one idea of these questions, it is that numbers also kind of speak. Don't think that they kind of don't speak. They also kind of speak. What do you mean? All right now, so as you look at this particular number, remove them. Remove them. Just focus on 1 by 4. In your mind, take them as 1 by 4. What is 1 by 4? 25%. What you are trying to say is, hey, look, my answer, 123 by 456, I want to write as a percentage. Price. It's a fraction. It's a fraction. See, if I give 1 by 12, we all know. Point here is okay. I got 123 by 456. Why, why we are practicing three digit numbers? Technically, you get a two digit number by three digit number. Technically, more often than not, you get this, or you get a three digit number by four digit number. All right, ABC, all right, or you get a numerator as a three digit number, and the denominator will be four digit number. Right now, one of these calculations is what you get more often than not. You may say that, hey, what if I get one digit number by two digit number? It's a cakewalk. Therefore, what we are trying to do, we are trying to normalize instead of taking this situation and this situation because for, an ex for example, I wanted to learn the skill, I've taken the very midway. All right, now I've taken the median path, saying that, okay, let's learn how to, how do we calculate these values out here. So that will give, that will give, the, that will build the plot form for it, knowing what we get in the questions. So we are building a plot form short through this particular journey today, all right, now in the next one and a half hours or so i'll illustrate all the other points as well all right all the other points also we'll speak about it look all right now first thing is what the moment i look at the number 123 456 i know that my answer will be somewhere about 25 percent that's it that's the first judgment skill i want just like if you are driving a four-wheeler will my car enter this particular all right now will my car go through this gap or not assume that there are some vehicles standing there there is a small gap will my car fit into this or not can i get into this gap or not can i navigate through this particular gap or not that's a judgment skill all right you don't have to get exact or no exact all right will it exactly go or not that we will decide once we go closer you are looking that road from the far and you are saying that will my car go through this particular gap or not so that's what i mean that's what i mean by approximation i'm saying that one look at this number 123 by 456 i know that my answer is going to be 25 percent i will get little closer to understand how much more than 25 or how much less than 25 but i know that it is closer to 25 an approximation that's a quick approximation that i did now let's go to the second round the second round there so once i know 25 percent what do i do here friends what do i do what i do is the method one is something like this i will calculate 25 percent of the base what is 25 percent of 456 i will calculate yeah from where i got the idea of 25 percent i told you as i told you just knock off these digits just look at one by four you understand that that's 25 percent so therefore what i do here i have to compare the numerator with denominator isn't it see when you got 82 marks out of 100 82 marks out of 100 what was the gold standard the gold standard was 
denominator you are saying that you got 82 out of 100 remember always the denominator is the key denominator is the key you have to arrive at numerator using the denominator that's a whole idea and therefore what is my gold standard in this particular question 456 that's a gold standard so therefore you know that your answer is closer to 25 percent which means 123 is very close to 25 percent but let me find myself what is 25 percent what is 25 percent friends one fourth of 456 one fourth of 456 put an approximate number there put an approximate number there it will become one one four one one all right one one four one hundred and fourteen so that is 25 percent but take a look at this number this number is 123 but what you got here is 114 so which means say what is the gap between these two numbers now the gap between these two numbers is nine so which means 123 is nine more all right 123 is nine more good so now you are saying that hey add nine to this particular number add nine to this particular number that is when it becomes 120 23 because I wanted what is 123 good hey, what is 9 what is 9 so look at this number guys there is a 456 if I ask you what is 10% of 456 listen 10% of 456 is 45.6 nothing but 45 okay hey, what is 1% of 456 1% 1 of 456 is nothing but 4.56 it's just about shifting the decimal place isn't it this everybody everybody knows all right 1% is 4.56 simple done so you wanted 9 here hey, what is 1% all right 1% is 4.56 take 4.5 no problem all right anyway you are doing an approximation here take 4.5 right 4.5 here so therefore what is 2% if 1% is 4.5 what is 2% then 2% is going to be 9 slightly more than 9 does not matter so therefore Therefore, you are saying that man this 9 is nothing but 2% of 456. 2% of 456 is nothing but this value called as 9. So 25% plus 2% therefore 27% of 456. 27% of 456 is 123. So quickly you will get your answer to the first question is 27%. You will say that 123 divided by 456 is 27%. See one look at the question within fractions of second you know that your answer is closer to 25. How close to 35 is what you just wanted to evaluate. Right. So you can use your calculator let us later to verify friends this is what i wanted you to learn 27 percent so it hardly takes any time listen all it it hardly takes any time out here so because all it now so once you know that the, your answer is closer to 25 how long it will take to divide a number by four and arrive at 114 hardly few seconds okay then how long it will take to understand that what is the deficit between these two numbers the deficit between these two numbers is about nine all it i need to add nine more to this nine more to this just look at the denominator and figure out that okay so 10 percent becomes what one percent becomes what just do it mentally there mentally there from one percent you can navigate to two percent three percent whatever you want right so the pretty simple one let's practice one more let's keep this in mind i hope all of you are getting into the rhythm here you are getting hang of what i'm trying to say do one more in case already you didn't get it do one more let's do one more so what do i look here all right now forget all right now remove these numbers all right knock up these numbers two by seven you are trying to say that 28 percent your answer is closer to 28 percent one look at this particular question i know that i'm closer to 28 maybe little around that little around that you can't say that Hey, this answer will be close to 40 percent come on this is closer to 28 percent because we know 2 by 7 is 28.56 percent i don't want that accuracy one look at this in few seconds fractions of seconds time i know that my answer is close to 28 how close to 28 that's what i need to find out all right now is it little more than 28 it is how much less than 28 that's what i got to find out that will take another few seconds from here let's understand let's understand you want to find out what is 28 percent of the number two ways guys either directly find 25 percent first don't try to find 28 percent find 25 percent or try to find 30 percent all right now either ways because 28 is closer to 25 as well as 30 25 percent of what 773 means what 773 divided by 4 that's what you'll be doing here 773 divided by 4 that's what you do great all right let's do that okay let's do that what is the value that turns out to be 1 and then you have 37 9 times 36 all right therefore all right now 7 2 or 3 times 193 roughly it is going to be 193 good 193 now look at the gap all right but where you wanted to reach you wanted to reach 270 here it is Already you wanted to reach 217. Hey, what is the gap between them? You are at 193, but you want to reach to 217. So therefore, what is the gap between them? The gap between them is nothing but 24. The gap is 24. From here till here, there is a gap of 24. Therefore, you are suggesting that add 24 to this particular number. Sure, we will add 24 to this particular number. Now look at this. Hey, what is 1%? What is 1% of 773? 1% of 773? 7.7. All right, roughly about 7.7. .7. You can take it as 8 as well 7.7 .7 is pretty close to 8 as well already it is very very close to 8 
okay very very close to 8 no worries okay therefore you would say that that's 7.7 well that's close to 8 so 8 into how much is 24 3 percent therefore you are trying to say that man 3 percent of 773 will be very very close to 24 3 percent would be really really close to 24 but it will be slightly more than 3 percent slightly more than 3 percent good therefore you are trying to say that my answer is nothing but 28 percent 25 plus 3 you said that it will be closer to 28 percent in fact it is closer to 28 percent but it will be slightly more marginally greater than 28 percent. Well, you look for an answer which is marginally greater than 28 percent. Marginally greater because you know that okay because 7.7 .7, you took it as 8 in your mind all right? because all these are mental calculation. You don't write all this right. You don't write this piece. You don't write this piece. Even you don't write this piece. What I'm boxing you don't write. Probably this is one calculation that you would have done. All right, you would have done. Then all right, you say that 24 more is required. All this 7.7 .7, etc happening in your mind. So therefore hardly there is anything to write. Let's be mindful. You will not write as much as I'm writing. I'm writing with all this because you got to understand what I'm thinking. But when you are doing it, most of the things happen, most of the thing happens in your mind. You hardly write any piece of information on the paper with respect to these calculation. Fair enough. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. I'm hoping that you are all getting into the groove what I'm trying to do out here. What I'm trying to do out here. So look, Alec, again, when you look at this next question, you say that, okay, this is 4 by 9. Okay, what is 4 by 9? 44.44%. Therefore, you are trying to say that, man, this question is very, very close to 50%. 45, 45%. You are all at one look at it. You know that your answer is close to 45%. Your answer is close to 45%. Two ways. Either take 40% and do the forward journey or take the 50% and do the backward journey. Choice is yours. Alright, that's your choice. Okay, let me start with 40-40%. Let me start with 40%. Let me start with 40%. 40% of 413. 40% of 413. I started off with 40% of, sorry, 40% of 958. 40% of 958. How do I do 40% of 958? 958 into 4 by 10. You can write 2 by 5 also. There is absolutely no worry. You can do that also. This is also easier. 4 by 10 is easier. Hey, why 4 by 10 is easier? That becomes 95.8 into 4. The advantage with this 10 is what? Putting a decimal place. Well, the advantage is just putting a decimal place. Okay, let me obtain what is this value therefore, right? now. So therefore, let me write it. Well, 95.8, 95.8, I have to just multiply this by 4. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, 8 into 4, 32. Well, therefore, 20, 23, 23, 36, 38. All right, so therefore, you are saying that 383.2, 383.2. You are saying this is 383.2. Take it as 383. There is no worries. Take it as 383. You take this as 383. Now look from 383 where you should reach here. You are at 383. Where you should reach? 383. Take it as 383. Where you should reach? 413 you should reach. You should reach up to 413. Okay. okay what is the gap from 383 to 413? The gap is about 30. The gap is about 30. You are saying that 30 is the gap. Good. All right. 30 is the gap. Now look at that. Okay. What is 1% of 958 friends? What is 1%? What is 1% 1 of 958? 1% 1 of 958 is 9.6. But what is the gap is required here? 30. 30 will be what? About 3%. About 3%. 3% is going to be 30 more. Therefore, 3% is what you should have. 3% will be close to 30. I'm not saying it will be 30. It will be closer to 30. Therefore, what is that you are trying to add? 40% because 40% is 383. And another 3% that is 30. That's what you are supposed to be adding 30. Therefore, 40 plus 3. You are saying that hey, this answer is just more than 43% just above 43%, slightly, marginally above 43%. Right, let's keep this in mind, let's keep this in mind. So this is one method, this is one method. What you do is, you look at it, you'll get a wide, wide approximation. Once you get that approximation, you know that your answer is closer to 45%. You know how to calculate either 40% fast or 50% fast. If you calculate 40%, go forward by adding. What if you calculate 50%, go backward by subtracting. So these are the two, these are, that is one method. Let's learn another method of approximation. I guess everybody is clear with this what I'm trying to do I did about three examples on this I did about three examples I'm sure all it all of you understood what I'm trying to do here all of you understood what I'm trying to do here I will teach you another method here I will teach you another method that's a percentage method that's a percentage method you learn you learn and then you can apply whichever the method is comfortable to you there is no hard and fast tool that you should use the first method or the second method this is the method one all right now this is the method one so let me take a look at the method two let me take a look at the method too. Now listen to this friends. All right, approximation is this. Percentage. Percentage means what? 113 into 600. 113 into 600 into 100. This is what I should be doing here. 
all right into 100 that's a percentage isn't it that's a percentage now look at this hey what if i would have given the number as 113 by 600 you would have loved it you would have loved it why because you would have done it as a 100 and 100 cancel you would have said that my answer is 113 by 6 perfect all right now you would have loved it instead of giving 606 had i given it as 600 you would have loved it already you would have definitely loved it but but it's not 600 it is 606 it is 606 good all right now so how do we do understand clearly understand clearly the first sum so what you are doing is hey you have 113 and 606 decide that okay i want to make my denominator 600 i want to make my denominator 600 good okay now how much did you subtract you subtracted 6 because there was a 606 you subtracted 6. Don't subtract 6 in the numerator, friends. Don't subtract 6 in the numerator. You got to subtract a percentage value. Now, what I meant here, now look at this 606. You calculate what is 1 percentage of 606. Because of percentage of 606, 1 percentage of 606 is 6.06. .06. Nothing but 6 only. Nothing but 6 only. 6.06 .06 is nothing but 6. What you subtracted here? Therefore, you say that, hey, I subtracted 1 percentage. All right, now you know that the value subtracted is 6. But what I want you to focus upon is how much percentage you subtracted, not the absolute value not the absolute value the percentage value sure absolute value is 6 because that's what you start that's where you start you are thinking because you decided to make it 600 all right what is this i'm trying to use the proportion all right what i'm using is a proportionally you should decrease all right therefore percentage one percentage you decrease hey, here also you better decrease by one percentage all right here also you decrease by one percentage decrease one percentage therefore what you are trying to say one percentage of 113 yeah what is one percentage of 113 1.13 just subtract one that's all right subtract one because anyway what you are doing is an approximation therefore what is the value now 112 so therefore what is the required answer you are trying to say 112 divided by 600 into 100 that's a percentage look at the advantage that you have the advantage is 112 by 6 is all you are trying to calculate that's it all you are trying to calculate is 112 by 6 let's calculate this 6 1 times 6 then you have 52 let's 6 8 times 48 then you have another 40 therefore you say that 6 6 times all right 18.67 percent all right 18.67 percent you are trying to say that look this value is as good as 18.67 percent 18.67%. That's a value that you are getting there. Okay, your approximation, first cut. First cut is this, 1 by 6 you would have seen. What is 1 by 6? 1 by 6 is 16.66%. Therefore, you know that your answer is somewhere about 16%. You can't look at this number and say that my answer will be 25%. Come on, it will be around 16%. That much you know. All right, now this is another method. What is another method? Another method is make the denominators a single digit number or a two digit number for which you know the divisibility rule. Which means when you look at 606, try to make it 600. When you look at 600, 23 try to make it 600 when you look at 330 383 either make it 300 or make it 400 idea is what you know the table of six you know the table of six you know the table of four that's what you are trying to do out here all right that's what you are trying to do out here okay let's do one more question don't panic let's do one more question let's do one more question you will understand it as we do let's as we do two three examples i'm sure you will understand it focus is on proportionally decreasing the values how much proportionally whatever the new denominator you decrease or increase the numerator should be proportionally decreased that proportion the word proportion is nothing but the percentage here proportional decrease or the percentage wise the value should remain same okay good let's do this here so the word proportion you remember all right now not the absolute value should remain constant the proportionality should remain constant okay yeah let's see here 623 here you decided that i may want to make it 600 good you decided that i want to make it 600 if you want to make it 600 how much you are decreasing you are decreasing 23 because you have 623 but you decided that you want to make it 600 perfect therefore decrease i'll decrease 23 now the point here is hey i am at 623 but i am saying that i want to make it 600 in the sense i decided i'll i made 23 less all right percentage wise i want percentage wise how much less absolute value wise it is 23 percentage wise it is how much now calculate one percent what is one percent of 623 all right one percent of 623 6.23 good okay yeah, what about four percent all right not approximately four percent four percent is going to be 24 point something 20 all right 24 point something so is 24 four percentage of 623 is 24 closer to 23 yes 24 is pretty close to 23 therefore say yourself hey i need to subtract four percent reduce four percent all right reduce the number by four percent then go here reduce it by four percent 
then reduce it by 4%, roughly 4%, roughly, don't panic, roughly reduce it by 4%, good. So what is 1%? What is 1% 1 of 287? 1% of 287 is 2.8. 2.8 good all right hey, roughly all right now roughly 4% 4% of 287 4% take it as 3 4 into 3 that is nothing but 12 so reduce somewhere about 11 reduce about 11 that's fine all right roughly 4% reduce 11 so how did you do that 2.82 took it as 3 4% is nothing but 4 into 3 12 but less, slightly less than 4% because all right now it was 24 but you reduce you have to reduce only 23 here likewise slightly all right now 11 reduce 11 here 287 minus 11 there for 287 minus 11 all right therefore it becomes 276 already you are calling it as 276 good so that's where you are 276 by 600 do the division friends all right simply divide by 6 simply divide by 6 all right because why it's a percentage right in 200 is there all a right, tacit number in 200 is there zeros are getting cancelled therefore technically you are saying that 276 by 6 is what i'm looking at right now so therefore 6 4 times 24 then you have 36 all right 6 6 times is 36 therefore you are saying that hey answer to this question is very close to 46 percent you can use calculators later to verify them your answers will be pretty close to what i'm talking here all right pretty very very close to what i'm talking here right very very close to what i'm talking here no doubt all right it will be very very close but do it later all right do it later all right do those questions later not right now right now don't try and waste your time let's do those questions later okay let's go to the next one friends let's go to the next one i hope all of you got the answer here all of you got the first two. If you got the first two, let us try the third one. Third one, let's try the third one. Okay. Now, 383, what do I do? 383, what do I do? Let me make it 400. You may say that, hey, can I make it 300? You can, but then 300 means you have to travel too much backward. So, therefore, what? Can I travel any side? Yes, you can travel any side. You are now traveling what? Forward. You are traveling forward. Good. So, therefore, 383. So, how much you are adding here? Therefore, you are adding 17 to this. You are adding about 17 to this. Now, the point here is what is that percentage value? 17 means what percentage? Now, listen to me. Now, let's listen to me. What is 1% of 383? 1% of 383. 3.8. 1% of 3 out of 3.8. Good. All right. Therefore, hey, what is 4? But take it as 4 in your mind. Absolutely no worries. Take it as 4. That's fine there. All right. That's fine there. Yeah, therefore, what is 4%? 4% becomes 16. 4% of the same number becomes 16. 16 is very, very close to this. So, technically, you should do 4.5%. That's okay. We'll add a little more there. 4 4.5% we should do. 4.5% we should do. Take it as 4%. That's all right. Technically, already if you want to technically understand it, already it should be 4.5%. Is there is it a harm to take 4%? I don't see any harm. Take it as 4% and a little more. 4%. Do exactly same thing here, guys. You got to add 4% now. You got to add 4 4 percent. 4 percent of what? 813. Already 813. First, let me calculate what is 1% of this. 1% is nothing but 8.13. 8.13 take it as 8 okay hey what is 4 percent therefore all right 24 all right now it's 24 just add a little bit to that make it as 25 or 26 all right that's a good bet add other 25 or 26 to this particular number good add 25 no worries add 25 because you added the denominator therefore you add the numerator also add add 25 to that particular number all right therefore that will become 838 838 or 840 anything is fine hey can i take 840 also yes you can take 840 also there is absolutely no harm all right, there is absolutely no harm. You can take on that particular number. Okay, so therefore, all right, now 838 or 840 divided by 4. All right, now, sir, technically, you are saying that this question is as good as writing 838 divided by 4. All right, 838 divided by 4. 840 is also fine. I'm not denying that fact. So, therefore, what is your answer? All right, now, 8 one time. Sorry, 8 two times. 8 two times. Then there is a 0. Then there is 0. All right, then you will say that 8 nine times. Somewhere about 209% or 210%. I may say that 209 or 210%. Your numerator is 210% of your denominator. Your numerator is 210% of your denominator. You can take the calculator later and you can calculate. You understand that, yes, it is 210%. 813 by 383 would be very, very close to 210%. Right? Yeah. I hope all of you got both the methods. All right, now both the methods. All right, number one, the first one. All right, now first way of doing the approximation. All right, that's what we learned here. All right, that's 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 one way of dealing with this. You understood how I did the first part, and this is the second part. This is the second way of dealing with this. Now, which method to do it? That is up to you. All right, both can be interchangeably used, or you can master one of the techniques and you can start using it. The choice is yours. All right, the choice is yours. Fair enough. All right, let's get on to the modality now. So this gives a little bit of background to the calculations that we'll be doing today. All right, that we'll be doing today. We'll do five to six sets. Five to six sets of data. All right, we'll do a couple of questions on tabular representation of data tables and we'll do a couple of questions on on the bar graphs all right now these
these, these are the two simple things that we look at with emphasis on understanding the data, interpreting the data and doing some calculations as well. From the next class onwards, I'll go a little deeper with respect to the concepts and also the calculations, the interpretations, etc. This being the very first class, I really don't want you to send the shock signals, shock waves into your mind. So rather, let's try and keep it simple. At the same time, let's also try and utilize and build some skill. All right, here we go, guys. Here we go. A couple of hygiene factors to be kept in mind. Hygiene factors to be kept in mind whenever you're looking at the data interpretation. See, look at this particular chart. There is no point reading these numbers. That's a point I'm trying to make. Hey, shall I be looking at these numbers? No, you need not be looking at these numbers. Whenever you're looking at chart, read the header. Read the header, read the footer, read the header and the footer. What is this consumption something? Okay, even before that, there will be some one sentence running there. What I'm trying to say is listen carefully. Read the header, read the footer. What is the footer here? Figure, consumption of metals, metals versus plastics in the given years of car manufacturing in thousands of tons, in thousands of tons. Yeah, what is that? Metals right, versus plastic. How, did, how much metal is used? How much of the plastic is used? In thousands of tons is given. Good. All right, no, that's all you got to understand. That's what you mean by the consumption. Consumption of what? It is explained here, metals and plastic. That's how you quickly read this particular data. What do you mean? I meant that, okay, read the header, read the footer. Quickly read the header and quickly read the footer. All right, that's one point that you do. Second thing that you do, uh, the second, second thing that you do also, you got to just look at the x-axis and y-axis. Hey, what is x-axis here? Years. All right, technically, the data is analyzed for six years. Good. Okay, quick look at that. Okay, it's years. All right, now years on one hand, it's given. Years on one hand, it's given. So on the other hand is what? Tons, amount of tons being used on the other hand. All right, now the tons being used on the other hand. 5, 10, 15. All right, the scale of 5. Jump is the scale of 5. So you are looking at that. That's all. Hey, what about these numbers? Should I be looking at these numbers? Find out that, hey, this is the smallest number. This is the largest number. Hey, don't get into that. Don't get into that. Hey, should I be reading these legions as well? Legions, hey, which means the diamond means metal. Okay, this is the metal decreased, increased. Should I be doing that? Absolutely, you know, legions also later, legions also later. When you look at the graph, what you got to do is, hey, look for the header, look for the footer, look for all it. Now, what is the data on the x-axis? Look for the data on the y-axis, things like that, right? No, things like that. That is it. After that, I should do what? After that, you should be reading question. How many questions? Technically, all right, if it is a... Technically, I suggest that you read all the questions quickly or at least a couple of questions. Don't read one question and stop there because sometimes it might happen that the very first question, so because what you see on the user interface is something like this. This is what you see on the user interface because all the exams, most of the exams that you take will be online. In fact, all of them, all of them would be online technically, right? So all of them would be online. So therefore, when you're looking at them, what happens is the graph will be here. Well, this particular graph would be here and you'll be seeing only one question at a time. There will be a previous button and there will be a next button. Click the next button, friends. Click the next button. Read the second question also. Click the next button. Read the third question also because there could be a couple of questions built on the same data. So why don't you read all of them? Because it is very likely that the very first question can be a tricky question. Tricky question. First question is pretty tricky. You look at that question and it doesn't make immediate sense. Immediate sense. Look at the second question. Probably second can be the good question to start with. So why don't you focus on that? That question to start with therefore read the questions once you read the question find the stimulus in that particular question and then come back and look at the data all right now with respect to the data because you don't know what kind of question has been asked so what you do is you hold the stimulus in the sense you understand what is required there and then with that perspective you look at the data all right with that perspective you look at the data otherwise you don't know with what perspective to look at this data now to take a look at this graph here no question is asked nothing is asked you can keep looking at this graph and you can make 10 different interpretations of your own all right, you may you may be interested that hey what is the highest value or what is the what is the best value of the metals all right the metal is nothing but the diamond if the best value of the metals is your okay it is 31 hey, what is the least value of the metals the least value of the metals is your i it is 10 all right it is 10 all right it is 10 your least value of the metals is 10 in the year 2001 but the point is is author interested in that why you are finding the least and the best is the author interested in to understand what is the least and the best what is the difference between the least and the best for the metals consumed no author may not be interested then why you are interested so what you do is look for what author is interested all right what is the call it what is all it what is the question is our question is about and then look for the data and then look for the data from that perspective okay yeah these are some of the hygiene factors i want to keep it in mind that's it simply put hey keep these hygiene factors in mind all right don't be interested in your own in your new curiosity don't be lost in your own curiosity rather work with what author's interest is align your interest with the author's interest 
right yeah so that is something i want you to keep it in mind guys all right that is something i want to keep it in mind so that is what has been explained out here all these points are about here all right therefore for me the point four and five are very very important a lot of test takers fumble there they don't understand the importance of point four and five what is that check answer options check answer options how far are the answer option or how pay or how close job point not four and five three and four all right, three and four. How far are the answer options or how close are the answer options? Because if the answer options are far, your approximations can be as vague as possible and you will get the answer in no time, fractions of seconds. If the answer options are close, it is a probing for a little uh, closer. All right, now it is probing for the calculation skills from you. It might take little time to close. Therefore, what kind of calculation to be done depends upon what are my answer options are looking like, how my choices are looking like. You got to keep an eye on this and scan through the questions. I I already told you scan through the questions don't look at one question and get stuck with that question because probably the first question can be very tricky one rest of the questions are just a road highway all right which means that can be you can zoom you can go faster that's what you mean right therefore you got to take a look at those particular questions you got to take a look at those questions questions are technically classified into three types which means by observation you can answer the questions sometimes you just have to compare and answer the questions sometimes you got to calculate and answer the questions we will look at all these types as we go along we look at all these types so the but these are the things that you got to keep it in mind. Hey, one important, read the header, read the footer, all right, then root what is there in the x axis, what is there in the y axis, x and y axis here, and then just take a look at the question, come back with that stimulus, then take a look at the legends, all, all that particular stuff. But when you are taking a look at the question, read a couple of questions at a time, and when you are also trying to solve that solve a particular question, understand how close are your answer options or what is the gap between the answer options, right? These are the things that has to be borne in mind. Okay, now all right, with all this background for the last 45 minutes or so, all this particular background, we are ready now to venture into the actual data. Now let's take looking at the graphs out here. Next one hour or so, let's start looking at the graphs. Let's see what are the various calculations that have to be considered and done. All right, let's 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 get into let's get into the calculate. Let's get into the let's get into the exposure of the data interpretation now. So what we did so far is I gave the background. So whatever the background I've given, let's see that already right, how this background can be used as we get into this particular progress through this particular lecture. So here we go. One of the simple data, simplest data here. Simple data. This is a question, friends. This is a question. Here is the question out here. This is question. Okay, simple. I guess all right now you would have done, you would have understood this. Hey, what is this? Hey, what is given here? All it in this particular column. What is important? Crop types of crops types of crops are here. So you can count, you may say that seven types of crops are there or it's not really important. You may say that, okay, some crops are given groundnut all right, and then they'll say that, okay, sunflower, they're saying about the castor, all right, now, so okay, that's like about linseed, whatever, all right, now, so you will say that, okay, don't pay really attention to the names, hey, uh, is there any of my favorite crop out here? Don't bother, all right, some crops are there. Should I be really reading the names? Not really, you don't have to be reading. You'll just say that, okay, there's a crop here, great, all right, now, so what is, what is that here? India, all right, now, the, all right, India, all right, now, before that head the reader read the footer here productivity is what is given here productivity is what how many kgs of oil seeds how many kgs of oil seeds can be yield can be can be yield, yielded in a hectare in a hectare of a land all right that's a productivity which means how fertile is that particular land that's what we are saying in india all right now this is the for this is the productivity world productivity is this world which means the world average productivity is this now highest productivity in the world all right now, which means one of the countries we don't know which country highest productivity for groundnut for one of the countries is this. Hey, what is this world? That's average. All of them considered all the countries who are producing groundnuts put together. World productivity is becoming this per hectare. All right, this is the amount of oil seed. All right, now that can be grown. All right, that can, that, uh, that can be grown. All right, out in a per, per hectare. All right, now, but then this is, the, this is for India and this is for the best. All right, this is the best. Okay, that, that's already, you don't, you don't have to analyze so much. But then, yeah, maybe to looking at one particular row, you'll understand a little better. Therefore, you say that India against the world and there is a highest productivity for one of the countries that's what you are looking at good let's take a look at this particular question all right let's take a look at the first question now you understood the graph so which means when you look at this particular graph what just five seconds or ten seconds you look at this you look at this and interpret them that's what you mean by data interpretation done interpretation is done immediately do what get on to the question get on to the question what's he asking the india's productivity is what percentage of world's productivity where in sunflower just go to sunflower 
just go to sunflower india divided by world that's it india divided by world into 100 in other words if i know the fraction i know the percentage simple india divided by world i should do for what for sunflower category here all right now here i have see you should be very careful about what is in the numerator what's in the denominator i talked about the keyword off I talked about keyword off in the percentage chapter. All right, now off. Whatever comes immediately after the off should be in the denominator, however long the sentence is. What is in the denominator? The world. Immediately after off, what is coming here, guys? The world. Therefore, world is in the denominator. What should be in the numerator? Therefore, India. That's what I wrote here immediately. India divided by world into 100. All right, now just look for the keyword off here. All right, there is a keyword off here. Therefore, the moment you see the off, what it says? Hey, whatever comes after off will be in the denominator. Simple, simple, simply put. Therefore, you just put that in the denominator world let's go to sunflower what you are writing here 556 556 divided by 1247 divided by 1247 let's quickly get the approximation for this let's use the technique 2 technique 2 means what 1200 I will do this 1200 all right man if you are doing 1200 how much you are subtracting 47 percentage wise how much you are subtracting about 4 per about 4 percent about 4 percent a how 4 percent because all right what is 1 percentage of 1247 what is one percentage of 1247, 12.47? Nothing but 12. You can take it as 12 in your mind. There is no harm. Take it as 12. So, but 47, but it's not 12. I want to subtract 47. 47 is what? Into 4 times. 12 into 4 is 48. About 4 times. That's fair enough. So, therefore, what you are saying in the numerator also, I want to subtract 4%. I want to subtract 4%. Hey, look, what is 1% of 5.5, 556, 5.5, 5.5, 1% is about 5.5, 5.56, 5 you can write 5.5 5 is good. Hey, what about 4% therefore? 4% is 22. Just subtract about 22 from the numerator. Just subtract 22 from the numerator. 21 is also fine. 21 or 22, somewhere around that particular figure. That's a point there. Okay, so that would result in 534. All right, I, do I know the tables of 12? Yes, tables of 12 because into 100 is there. Zeros gets cancelled. You just have to do the tables of 12. Right? Yeah, 12, 4 times 48. 12, 4 times 48. Then you have 54 there. All right, again, 12, 4 times 48. Let right, 12, 4 times 48. Now you have 60. All right, now so therefore you will say that 12, 5 times. All right, 12, 5 times 60. Therefore you are saying that the answer to this particular question is 44.5%. Okay, there were answer options. I deliberately removed the answer options for a simple reason that let's understand, all right, now say if there are no answer options or if there are close answer option, if there is a box for this particular question, all right, saying that or approximately to one decimal place or whatever, how I could have calculated, keeping that in mind. Let's practice, all right, let's practice a couple of questions without choices as well. That builds our calculation skills, isn't it? So answer is 44.5. Even if you have a calculator, you can work it out you figure out that hey your answer is very very close to 44.5 percent right with the answer options help you can usually evaluate them that's not a worry here that will come to it later let's apply the skills that we have learned here okay your answer is 44.5 technically you are saying that okay india divided by world all right india divided by world productivity is in the fraction all it is in the ray all right that's about 44.5 percent there okay let's go to the next question let's go to the next question i hope all of all of you guys are able to apply this what we learned there let's go here Let's take a look. In how many categories is India's productivity not more than 50% of world's productivity? In how many categories? So technically, how many categories are there? Seven. We can give a box for this question, friends. Happily, you can give a box and say that, okay, in the box, you can type the question, type the answer because theta question can be created using this theta. Type in the answer option. All right, theta questions, type in the answer options. You can type it because if you are anyway going to put an integral value from between 1 and 0 and 7 because all 7 may qualify or none of them may qualify, right? Now, that's what you are trying to do. Okay, what you are trying to do here, India divided by world should be less than, not more than, means what? Less than or equal to 50%. All right, now, whenever this happens, you will say that, okay, that is in, all right, that is in, not more than means what? Less than or equal to, less than or equal to 50% India's productivity, not more than India by world should be less than or equal to 50 percent good friends all right now what do you do just the approximation first round of approximation you do what is this going to be 9 by 13 all right what is this going to be 9 by 13 6.5 by 13 now look at it this is going to be 9 by 13 what you are writing here is 9 by 13 6.5 by 13 is 50 percent 9 by 13 is well beyond 50 percent well beyond 50 percent that's how you do this question you will actually close this question within 30 seconds or a minute that's it it's a 30 second question technical right yeah once you get the skill it's a 30 second question why first you will say that if it is closer to 50 percent then i will take cognizance of other digits otherwise what i will knock off two digits i will knock off two digits proportion 
rationally. Knock off two digits. I will write it as 9 by 13 in my mind. 9 by 13 is well above 50% there. So it is nowhere comparable to 50%. Therefore, you will say that man, ground nuts is out. Ground nuts is out. Ground nuts does not qualify. Next one, 8 by 15. All right, now you knock off this, you knock off this. Therefore, you say that 8 by 15. All right, 8 by 8 divided by 15. All right, 8 divided by 15. Hey, 8 divided by 15, again, 7.5 would have been 50% there. All right, 8 divided by 15 is well above 50% there. And also, you have a larger number, 75. You have a smaller number, 43. Therefore, it is more than 50% for sure. Therefore, this is also knocked out. All right, this is also knocked out. All right, why? Because 7.5 by 15, 7.5 by 15 is 50 percent but it is already 8 here it's already 8 and also 75 is more than 43 therefore you know that it is well above 50 percent out here it's well above 50 percent therefore that is knocked out okay 21 21 hey what is half of 21 10.5 all right now 21 that's what you are looking at 21 what is it here 10 therefore this is in all right because 10.5 that's about 1000 all right 1050 would have been all right 10.5 could have been about 50 percent there therefore all right, this is less than 50 percent soya bean is in soya bean is in so five and this is 12 that is in because it should have been 6 by 12 6 by 12 is 50 percent therefore that's enough 5 by 5 by 12 5.5 by 12 whatever is the number that you are taking it's it's anywhere less than 50 percent good now look at this 3 and 3 out it's very close to 100 percent so you are talking about 100 percent more than 100 percent therefore this is out more than 100 percent therefore that's also out okay lastly you have 8 here and you have 3 here therefore that is in so therefore how many are in friends soya bean is in sunflower is in and linseed is in therefore you would have said that answer to this question is three there are three commodities or three crops or right, three types of oil seeds for which all right for which productivity of india by world is less than 50 percent all right less than 50 percent simple one technically it's a 30 second question all right may not be right away right now but the point here is okay trust me this is a 30 second question once you read this all these seven evaluation happens in 30 seconds that's where i said that hey you should be a little better at fraction percentage equivalent and those kind of numbers that will quickly help you to evaluate see point here is first open up only open up only only few digits 9 by 13 open up like that if the close is fight then take a look at the other digits if the close is nowhere fight or if the fight is nowhere closer don't bother about it don't bother you would have already made the decision okay i hope all of you understood how to make the decision here of you understood how to make the decision yes okay okay here we go to the next set here we go to the next set Okay, read the way I asked you to read quickly. Read the way I asked you to read quickly and read this question stage. I'll give a minute. I'll give a minute, but read the way I asked you to read quickly. Do that part. Check you are able to do that. Yeah, I guess you got them. Already you got them. Okay, I'm doing only a couple of questions on each set. Reason being, I want you to just expose to various types of sets. Already exposed to various sites, uh, types of sets and various type of data. Right now, so if you look at this particular question, it looks like one look at it, it like, oh my goodness, what are all these uh, decimal places? All right, it looks like decimal places. Don't fall for all that. Don't fall for all that. So what we do, okay, all right, now, so what is the state-wise literacy growth and population growth? It's a literacy growth and population growth. What happened? The survey is done one in a dec once in a decade. Once the survey was done in 1981, the other time the survey is done in 1991. Yes, generally these kind of surveys are done once in a decade kind of because we can't talk about literacy rate every year, etc. They're generally done, all right, generally they're done in the context of a decade or so, right, the context of a decade or so. Similarly, the population growth also done already in a decade or so or sometimes once in five years something like that all right now once in five to ten years is a ten years is a pretty very common all right now way the ten years is generally the favored all right favored all right generally it is a much favored yeah can it be done once in five years it can be but you don't do these kind of massive exercises every single year because it's a massive exercise massive exercise okay anyways let's get back to this discussion let's get back so what is given to us first of all states are given how many states are there don't bother all right now don't keep counting one two three four that's later 
when the question asks then we will do it already is it question interested in how many days states already is there a question built on that then we will see otherwise don't bother some chart is given good so what is given here all right now percentage increase now look at this guys this is a percentage increase it's not literacy it is talking about the literacy rate increase in literacy rate all right now increase percentage increase hey, what happened whatever was the number in 1981 1991 they found that in andhra pradesh the literacy rate increased by 25.17 percent i have no idea what was that value there so 1981 what is the value no idea if you think that the value here was x value here is x all right now value here is x all right now value here 1981 say this is 1981 figure and this is 1991 figure so you are saying trying to say that this is 1.25 25% 1.25 times of x something like that of course 1.2517 i should write so there is a matter 1.25 times of x that's what you are trying to say between the numbers but this is what all right this is only a percentage growth percentage increase very clearly it's an increase percentage increase it's nothing to do with the literacy there all right that's what you will understand same thing okay they talked about literacy they are talking about female literacy similarly here the percentage population growth it is not the population population growth what happened all right now what happened in the 10 years is the population has grown in all right now the, there is a growth in the population in andhra pradesh so whereas there is a negative growth what happened in bihar the same year so between the same 10 years the population has decreased in the particular 10 years all right for some states there is an increase in population some states there is a decrease in population maybe because of migration whatever could be the reason but in that state there is a decrease in population something like that or it's something like that that's what we are trying to say here okay keep that perspective in mind which means when you read this you would have taken just about few seconds maybe 30 seconds or a minute to understand that okay there is a state issue it's a literacy rate okay in a decades period there is a literacy rate all right it's an increase percentage increase all right then you are saying that okay there is a population growth rate percentage none of them are absolute values none of them are absolute values everything is a percentage value everything that is given in the chart is a percentage value how long does it take to understand 30 seconds maybe 30 seconds this part and then just take a look at these particular columns all of this you have taken about 30 seconds good now do what immediately go to the question now don't try to look for a what is the best number out here oh okay all right the best number is 35.87 that's a best number okay yeah what is the worst number out here 22.34 right don't fall for them don't don't go for looking for what is the best number worst number that's none of your business immediately you do what already you go to the question i'm showing one question at a time on the presentation but in the exam what you should be doing you should be running couple of questions at once okay what is the question which state mentioned mentioned in the table above mentioned which state all right there are a couple of states so he is asking the name of the state exhibits the highest total literacy exhibit the highest total literacy answer is cannot be determined answer is cannot be determined how do i know which state in the given period exhibits highest total literacy because what is given to me is a percentage what is given to me is a percentage or well, it's just a percentage percentage is nothing to do with the highest total literacy for example guys now listen or right, if there is a manager in a company or right, manager in a company he earns 1 lakh or right, he earns 1 lakh rupee per month let's assume that he earns 1 lakh rupee per month you said that okay you are going to increase his monthly salary only by 10% only by 10%. 10% becomes how much here? 1 lakh. Now it will become 1.1 lakh. All right, it becomes 1.1 lakh. 1 lakh, 10,000. All right, that's what you'll be writing. 1.1 lakh. In the sense, all right, this particular number is becoming 1 lakh, 10,000 now. All right, 1 lakh, 10,000 now. Okay. On the other hand, in the same company, in the same company, all right, in the same company, there is a clerk. All right, clerk earns 20,000. Let's say that the wages of the clerk per month is 20,000. You said that, okay, I will increase this fellow's salary by 25%. I will increase his salary by 25%. All right, good. So, therefore, by increasing by 25%, his salary has now become 25,000. His salary has now become 25,000. Now look at this. Percentage wise, it's a big number. Just because it's a percentage wise big number, the literacy need not be great. It let value need not be great. Percentage wise, it's a small number. But look at the basis here, the basis and the amount of growth here. The growth is 10,000 here, the growth is 5,000 here, all of this. So therefore, we all understand that, hey, percentages are just abstract. Unless you attach with a base, I will not be able to conclude. Therefore, when you look at this particular question, you know that, hey, all these are percentages. I can't make a decision based on a percentage because here he is talking about the highest total literacy he is not talking about the literacy rate percentage increase in literacy he is not talking about that he is talking about the literacy as an issue therefore you say that answer is cannot be determined what was this question about this question was about pure interpretation did you interpret the data or not did you understand these messages did you understand
understand them. What I went to write here, did you understand these points or not? Pretty simple and obvious author was asking. I clearly wrote the percentage increase, or it percentage, percentage here. I clearly said that all numbers are percentages. Did you pay attention to that? Did you interpret it properly? Had you interpreted them? One read at this question, do mark the answer is cannot be determined. That's it. Or it cannot be determined because you are giving the percentage on one hand and you are asking something else on the other hand. Right? Therefore, I cannot answer that. I cannot answer that. Good. Yeah. So this is called as the pure interpretation question. You don't have to do anything. Sometimes they will check. All right. Sometimes they check. Did you understand the data first of all? Even before you calculate something, at times the check is, is the data clear to you. All right. Is the data is interpreted properly? All right. That's the first question. That, that's this particular question. Okay. Let's take another one, guys. Now that you understood the data, please quickly close this. Close this. Quickly close this. Now that you understood the data, I expect that you will close it faster now. Close it, friends. Close it. Okay, good. All right. Now let's let's take this. All right, let's take this. See, for with some questions, I will put you some learnings there. One, we look at this particular question. The ratio of percentage increase. Very clear. Author is talking about percentage increase only. All right. Anyway, this whole chart is for percentage increase. Therefore, I can answer why because it's percentage increase chart only. Therefore, he's talking like that. Percentage increase in what female literacy? Look, percentage increase female literacy matching perfectly matching right then percentage increase again he's talking about yes percentage increase all right now this time what total literacy total literacy it's matching the way he's talking is matching is maximum for which state sure i can do for all the states i can look for andhra pradesh okay this by this what i should be doing here all right now the ratio author is talking about ratio in the ratio the word two is important what comes before two is the numerator first value all right numerator what comes after two is the denominator hey, what is coming before two female all right, female is before two. Therefore, that's in the numerator. All right, now that, that's in the numerator. Divided by, by what is coming in the denominator, the denominator here, this side, the total literacy rate. Therefore, total female by total is going to be your response. Just excuse me. All right, therefore, already you are writing it as female divided by total. You are writing female by total. He is saying that, hey, I want the maximum value of this. Female by total has to be maximum. That's the meaning of this question. All right, what is important word in the ratio? One of the important words in the ratio is two. Why? The What is the phrase comes before two becomes your numerator. All right, or numerator or the first value. Basically, that becomes the first value. So two be two is nothing but the is two. All right, now some things come before, something come after. Same thing can be written as, all right, now same thing can be written as numerator by denominator. This value will sit in the numerator. This value sits in the denominator. Therefore, 2 is a very important word. So, however long the sentence is, simply, hey, what is coming before 2? Put that fellow in the numerator. What is coming in the denominator? What is coming after 2? Put that fellow in the denominator. See, these mnemonics will help to understand, resolve the issue faster. Uh, get to the core of the issue pretty faster. That's the whole idea. Good. We understood the importance of 2 now. All right, let's see this. All right, technically, what is expected to be done? Female by total has to be maximum. All right, now, second thing. All right, untrained mind. What they also do? They will do for Andhra Pradesh also but Andhra Pradesh is not there in the answer option why you are looking at Andhra Pradesh all right for what good you are looking at the Andhra Pradesh you will not get any incentive for doing Andhra Pradesh nobody says that oh there are four answer options Kerala Maharashtra Manipur and Madhya Pradesh oh you may say that no 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 I did for Andhra Pradesh and Bihar and Gujarat also you don't get any incentive you don't get any extra marks because you did for Andhra Pradesh Bihar and Gujarat see always be mindful about therefore I said that hey look at the choices also friends that's very important all right therefore all right now that's a stimulus you look at the stimulus what is the question stimulus and look at the choice as well. Look, all right, therefore, I said that if it is a number, what is the gap between the numbers? If there are now some other choices, be mindful about the choices because all right, now that way we'll become more efficient while solving the questions as well, right? Okay, so what are the issue here? Kerala. Now I just have to do for Kerala, Madhya, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Manipur. It's given in the same order. All right, that's order. All right, now that's what I'm trying to do. There last four. You just have to analyze it for the last four. Sure, we'll analyze it for the last four. What should be coming in the numerator here? Female should be in the numerator and the under literacy should be in the denominator. Good. Now look at this 31 by 30. 31 by 30 is greater than 1. 
Kerala is greater than 1. Fraction. Well, why, why for Kerala, what you are doing guys? For Kerala, 31.2 divided by 30.17. Well, this is what? Greater than 1. Of course, it's greater than 1. Look at the second one. Look at the second one. 22.8 by 35 less than 1. Less than 1. Comparison you are doing. Don't calculate. Don't calculate. First compare. First compare. Calculation is required when we get closer. When we get closer. All right, if two answer options are very, very close. All right, then we'll look at the compare. Then we'll go look at the calculation. Look at this. 25.92 by 35.87. Less than 1. All right, what you are writing for Maharashtra is this 25.92. That's a numerator. All right, divided by 35.878. This is less than 1. How much is that value? Not interested. It's less than 1. Okay, next one. Manipur. 29.68 and then 29.61 that is greater than 1. Now you say that hey, my answer has to be either Kerala or I should write it as a Manipur. Simple. That much decision you made. Why? Because both of them are greater than 1. Now take a close look at both of them guys. Take a close look at both of them. Kerala we already have it here. Kerala is third. This is Kerala. This is Kerala. All right, that's Kerala. Let's write for Manipur as well. Beside that. Let's write for Manipur. Let's write for Manipur. Anyway, by looking at those numbers, the decision is already made. I know that. Okay. Just for the make, just for all it, just in case, closer calculation. Come, what we are trying to do. Manipur is what? Manipur is 29.68 divided by, all it divided by 29.61. Now, look at that. Where the change is coming for Manipur in the second decimal place. So far, the numbers are same. 29.68 divided by 29.61. It is a damn close to 1. It is 1 only. Technically, it is nothing but 1. If you calculate 29.68 by 29.61, you will get 1 only as the answer, which means it's so close to 1.00, something like that you will get. Right? Now, here, at here, the very first, the number itself is changing, 30 to 31. Well, 30, it's not, you are not talking about the change in the decimal place. You are saying that the number itself is changing. 30 went on to become 31. Therefore, you know that, man, this is the better number. Definitely. Definitely, this is the better number. Therefore, Kerala is my answer. Simple. All right, now it's technically, trust me, if you knew how to do it, all right, once you understood it, this is just a 30 second question. Basically, it's a 30 second question. You will just look at like this and you will make the decision. Why? Because the numbers were so convenient. If this is a 30 second question because the numbers were so convenient to make a decision. Make a decision. You should never look at Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Gujarat, etc. All right, now you be mindful what is given in the choice. Look for those states and finish this particular deal. Compare it and finish this particular deal. I hope everybody is learning something here. Right? Everybody is learning. We talked about two things. Two. And then the importance of answer options. Importance of answer options. Don't try to do anything beyond answer options because you don't get any incentives for doing some extra work in the question. Right? Now, the wise thing is what? Do as minimum work as possible in the question. All right. Here we go. Another question on this. Another question. Quickly solve it, friends. Quickly solve it. I expect that you find the answer faster. Complete. Quick. Yeah, I guess you would have closed it, right? You would have closed it by now. Fine. So let's take a look. Nevertheless, let's take a look. Let's do it together now. Let's do it together. You would have closed it by now. Simple question. 30 seconds to 40 seconds is what it takes. Okay. For the state showing the minimum percentage, for the state showing the minimum percentage increase in total literacy. That's the first part. So first I need to identify. Identify the state showing, showing what? Minimum percentage increase in total literacy. Here, this is the total literacy. Minimum percentage increase. Of course, this chart is about percentage increase only. Minimum percentage increase in total literacy. What is that? Bihar. This is the smallest number. This is the smallest. This is the minimum. This is the minimum, 22.34. You don't have a number lesser than this. Okay. So therefore, all this phrase is trying to say that, okay, in Bihar, go to Bihar. That's what you are saying that for Bihar, considering the Bihar. Okay. Now what to do in Bihar? Okay. I went to Bihar. Do what? You got to find a ratio. Ratio means what? First look for two. 
hey, what is coming before two what is coming before two and what is coming after two look for the price hey, what is that percentage increase in total literacy okay total that's in the numerator total okay then the percentage change in percentage percentage a uh, percentage change in percentage population growth all it percentage population growth population growth rate all it the rate is nothing but population growth all it is nearly take the absolute value okay so i will go there total divided by percentage population right? percentage of growth rate all right population growth population growth he is saying that okay tell me what is this ratio this becomes my answer okay what is all right now take only the absolute values that's what he said take the absolute values which means mod value okay so what i should be writing in the numerator 22.34 this is the total this is the total all right 22.34 what i should be writing in the denominator the mod value of this friends mod value author only said take the absolute value that should be in the denominator therefore what is that 0.04 nothing but required answer 2234 divided by 4 simplify this 4 5 times 20 4 5 times 20 4 8 times 32 all right now 0.5 therefore you are saying that 5 done 58.5 simple one simple one you just have to follow the directions given in the question all right pretty simple question out here Hope all of you are getting this here. Let's shift the gear. Let's shift the gear. Let's take another kind of set. Let's take another kind of set. So now, all it now put the hygiene factors. What I said quickly. Look at the way I wanted you to look at that particular question. Look for the header. Look for the footer. All it look for the footer. So whatever is the information is given. All it was in the tables. That's what is the row. What is the column definition? Look for that quickly, and then get on to the questions. Get into the question and answer the question as soon as you could. As soon as you could. Here we go. Get the answer quickly, friends. Get the answer, put it on your sheet faster. Right? I hope already you marked the answer here. You marked the answer here. Very good. Okay. Now what is happening? The following table gives the NPS that is a non-performing assets. Non-performing assets. Right? Non-performing assets of various India banks in India. Various banks in India which are giving the educational loan. Talking about the educational loan division because there are different loan division. There is a personal loan. All right? There is a housing loan. So likewise there, are, there will be different kinds of loan. All right? There is a business loan likewise. Right now so as you know there will be various kinds of loan. We are talking about the education loan. So which banks we are talking about? We are talking about some banks in India. We are talking about NPS which means all right, they have taken the education loan but somehow all right, now they are not able to pay back. For some reason all right, these students after their grad after, after all right, after their education they are not able to pay back for whatever the reason so now therefore all right non-performing assets what is the change that has happened that's what they are doing now look at 2015 guys here 2015 so author is giving the data of four banks all right bank of india sbi whatever all right we know the names of these banks these are the five banks author has given the names of five banks but here he is saying that all banks all right here he is talking about the various indian banks various the word is various various does not mean all Various does not mean all. Various does not mean all. He is talking about all. Now the question is, does all mean fine? Does all mean fine? May not be all. Right. Now so look at this. This is 200, 600, 200, 300 and 100. All this put together is somewhere closer to 1000, 1500. That's it. About 1500. But what you have is 3500. So all this put together is 1500. Which means what? Eh? There are other banks as well. There are other banks as well. But author is interested in these five banks. That is it. He is representing. He is presenting the putting forth the data of these five banks in front of us. That does not mean that there are only five banks therefore various is different all is different you need to be very careful okay we are talking about the banks in india who are giving the educational loans and then we are talking about their non-performing assets or right, non-performing assets that's the educational perspective that's what we are talking about there so that's what we are talking about therefore all is different various is different we are interested in five call it five banks we are interested in the data of five banks that's it that does not mean that five is all five is not all five is a part of it because the sum itself tells about this go to 2015 add up, add up these numbers it's closer to 1500 but this is 3500 crores 3500 crores it's a different ball Therefore, you say that okay, so answer to the first.
first question is what answer to the first question is cannot be determined simple so other side is very simple have you clearly read the directions there if you have clearly read the directions you will understand that i am talking about various i am talking various is nothing but five but all is different all is different from various if you have understood this then the answer is cannot be determined because author is saying that from 15 to 17 for which indian bank all right now the npa has changed by the maximum percentage to tell the maximum percentage i need to know the initial value and i need to know the final value but i know that only for five banks but there are few other banks as well because he is talking about the banks in india so there are few other banks you did not furnish the data so how can i represent the name here therefore i'll say that cannot be determined give me the full breakup of all these 35036 i will tell you don't give me 1500 all right, roughly, roughly I'm saying it's not exactly 1,500. You are saying, hey, when there are 3,536 crores is the non-performing assets, don't give me 1,500 crores and ask me to make a decision. All right, don't make, give me a piece, all right, now we have a piece of data and make a decision. Give me full data for this question. Give me full data, then I will answer. Therefore, answer is cannot be determined. Remember, interpretation has to be clear. All right, interpretation has to be clear. It is not that every time you get a question on interpretation like this. Point is, your interpretation of the data has to be clear. That's why we call this as the data interpretation first we don't call this subject as data calculation it's not about calculation okay put the calculator in front of you and start calculating the number that's first is the interpretation generally yes you can expect that in most of the exams there would be already right, now one question on interpretation as well in the simpler exams but in some other exams there will not be a question on interpretation because interpretation itself would be a little challenging it will be a little challenging you will discover as we go along in this journey of these five lectures or right, we do about four to five lectures in this as we go through this journey you will definitely discover that fact how the interpretation itself becomes a critical factor Right, here we go. All right, you got the answer to this question. Answer is cannot be determined because what is given and what has been asked are two different things. All right, you are you are you are given a data of only five banks here. All right, you've been given a data of five banks. All right, given a data of five banks, and you've been asked uh, the, you've been asked the question reflecting all banks. All right, are reflecting all banks in India. Therefore, answer is cannot be determined. Pretty simple, good one. Let's go to the next one here, friends. Now answer this, friends. Answer this. I want you to answer this question. Please answer this, all of you answer this. Take a minute, get the calculation done. Don't use calculator. I don't want you to use calculator. Do without calculator, build that skill, judgmental skills. Okay, I guess you are done with the answer, right? I guess you are done with the answer. Let's take a look here. So what is author is asking here? He is saying that for these all right, now say SBI, he is talking about the SBI, non-performing assets of SBI, all right, as the total, all right, as the total, all right, now SBI, what percentage of the total of, 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 of what is coming here, total. For what? For this period. For this period means what? For three years. For three years. What you should be doing? SBI, you got to be adding these numbers. You got to be adding these numbers. Right, because for this period means okay what are the non-performing assets in 2015 16 and 17 you've got to be adding those particular numbers you add up this all right this will become 1606 all right this would become 1606 right that would become 1606 all right yeah similarly you got to be adding this you got to be adding these particular values you got to be adding these particular values all right this would become all right this would become 135 this would become i was just adding this some time back 13505 all right, this would become 13505 that's right all right now this would this would this calculation would become this okay now what is that you got to be doing here total is this therefore you are saying my required answer is 1606 divided by 13505 into 100 that percentage is there but this is a black box for us not required this is the required answer i'm talking about that's a required answer now take a look at the answer options that's what i was telling you take a look at the answer options hey we can do that calculation also there is a 13505 suddenly it looks like a five digit number boss all right now it's a big number here so all right now so when you when some number come like this then what do you want to wallet what is that you should be doing all right what you do is take a look at the answer options no no take a look at the answer option something is 9 something is 10 something is 11 something is 12 all right now you have 9 10 11 12 what do you do first you find 10 percent 
first you find 10%, then you find maybe 11% or 12%, something like that, 11% or 12%, like that you can find, like that you can find, hey, why you are doing this, so that I can eliminate the answer options, 10% of what, 13505. 10% of what? 13505, of course. Okay, let's find that. What is 10% of 1350? 1350, that's 10%. 1350. But the look here, the what is the value here? 1606. Good. Hey, what is 11%? 11% means add how much? 1%? Well, to get the 11%, you got to be adding 1%. Good. Hey, what is 1%, friends? 1% is nothing but 13. Well, 1% is nothing but 135 because 135, 0.05. Therefore, 1%, 1% of the number, 1% of the number, 1% of the number is nothing but 135. Call it 135. Okay, therefore, what is 11%? Add these two together, which becomes 11%, isn't it? Add these two together, which becomes 11%. Therefore, you would say that, okay, 11% is nothing but 1485, 1485. But look at the value here, guys. I need to be reaching what? 1606. Okay, so therefore, add another 1%, it will become 12%. Add another 1%. That's nothing but 135. This is 10%, 11%, and 12%. So therefore, what is that you are trying to say? Well, by doing this, you are saying that I'm going to 12% here. Add another 135 to this. You already got this. Add another 135 because these two added together you already have the value here therefore add another 35 to this okay therefore you would say that okay this is 20 well, this is 1620 you are saying that 1620 1620 is beyond this what you are trying to say that say 11 percent is less this value so what you are saying is a 11 percent is 1485 12 percent is 1620. So my value, what is my value here between all of this? My value is 1606. 1606 lies between 11% and 12%. Mark the answer. Hey, what lies between 11% and 12%? Look at the choices. Look at the choices and check what lies between 11% and 12%. 11.89, that's my answer. So therefore, you don't have to find out it is 11.89 because answer options are not very close. What did you do? You made the decision based on what you know. Hey, 10% calculation. Any calculation required for 10% calculation? No. Oh, yeah. it's only a shifting a decimal place to calculate one percent of a number any calculation is required no absolutely no you just have to shift the decimal place to get that 135 so therefore how long will it take to find 10 percent one percent and make a decision absolutely no moment about a minute's question about a minute's question or a minute's question because you just have to get this sum in place once you get this sum in place getting to the value of 10 percent one percent hardly takes any time adding those simple numbers hardly takes any time therefore you would say all right now so what you do you use your answer options that's a point here use the answer options getting 10 percent one percent is a mind game you just do it in the mind all right now it's a mental calculation you get it in the mind and then just add those numbers probably you will just write this number add this number and write this number you write this number some small pieces of numbers is what you are writing that is it all right that's it and then you will do it therefore there is a calculator or no calculator this question can be done within a minute's time about a minute's time is a good time for this question right yeah initially you may take some time because you are just getting into the rhythm of calculation but once you get onto the rhythm of calculation it's a minute question technically okay i hope all of you are getting this you are appreciating what i'm trying to do here i'm sure you are appreciating what i'm trying to do here okay all right one more for you one more for you on the same education loans one more for you <coughs> One more for you. A minute, friends. A minute. Quickly close it. Close it in a minute. Close it in a minute. I already taught you sufficient techniques. Close it in a minute. Yeah, I hope you got to the answer. You got to the answer. What's the question? For the given five banks, for the given five banks, author is very clear. He's not saying that all India's banks. Is it for the five banks? Whatever is the given five banks. How many instances are there where the NPA have increased by at least 20% over the previous year? Which means for Bank of Baroda, I can check what is the increase here. What is the increase here? That's what I will be checking here. Similarly, for SBA, I will check what is the increase here. Increase here. At most, my answer can be 10 because two here. 2 year and 2 year like this 5 into 2 I can have at most 10 instances 10 checkings has to be done 10 checkings of what 20% 20% let's see how do we do that hey what is 10% here guys 25 see look you have 250 
you have 250 what is 10 percent 25 what is 20 percent 50 what is 250 plus 50 your answer should be 300 that's it somewhere closer to 300 but look here it is 500 therefore this is tick what do you mean by tick there is a more than 20 percent that's what he meant look here at least 20 percent at least 20 percent means what greater than or equal to 20 percent that's the meaning of course it's greater than 20 so greater than 20 percent why so that's what you do here you look at this number okay what is the methodology how do you do this particular kind of question look at the initial value what is it 250 look at the initial value you get 20 percent in your mind how do you get 20 percent in your mind first get 10 percent shift the decimal place and get the 10 percent okay, what is 20 percent double this particular number 50 then what you do I'll just add up these numbers roughly you add up these numbers in your mind or look for the gap look for the gap you look for the gap here look at this number now make this number alive 528 hey there is a 250 here there is a 528 here you just wanted a 50 gap man there is a enough gap between these two particular numbers there is a gap of 250 to 300 between the numbers therefore you Say that this is in comfortably in do exactly same thing out here guys say what is 10 percent here 52 what is 20 percent there 100 so 100 is the gap that is required there 528 you are adding 100 to this 528 into 100 is what 628 somewhere about 620 630 answer should be but this is 630 671 therefore this is in roughly all right now 52.8 take it as 50 in your mind 50 plus 50 100 somewhere about 100 more the number should be but this number is more about 150 more so therefore that's comfortably in all right 140 more 150 more that's comfortably in there okay come here decrease well, it decrease therefore it is out 454 to 538 hey what is 10 percent 45 what is 20 percent 90 all well, right 90 therefore 454 plus 90 454 plus 90 will become 544 but it is 538 roughly roughly 544 should be minimum value therefore this also out. therefore sbi all right now both the years it's out Okay, let's go to PNB. 520, Violet, what is 10%? 25. What is 20%? 50. Well, at 50, if you add, it should be into 300, but this is 389. Very good. So, what is 10%? 38. Well, take it as 40 in your mind. Absolutely no problem. Take it 40. Hey, what is 20%? Therefore, 80. You just have to add 80 to this particular number. 80 to this particular number. But the gap is already 90 between the numbers. Therefore, this is also in. Therefore, that's also in there. Right, that's also in let's take a look at the next one 380 this is comfortably in all right this is out because it's decreasing 101 to 200 in all right this is also all right this is out all right this is out 30 30 60 this is out so therefore look at the number of ticks that you have put there all right four plus two six ticks therefore you have put about six ticks there all right, you have put about six ticks there that's your answer answer is going to be a therefore calculation of 20 percent is not a problem i hope all of you got this point all right now the way all right here i illustrated i explained it here how i'm calculating i explained it here i hope all of you got this okay that's a little bit of background about the tabular representation of data how to interpret the tables how we need to be meticulous about understanding the headers the footers all right this data all right kind of units etc so we are kind of comfortable there all right so we are kind of kind of we should be comfortable with that so what i do is now i will take a departure to all it now the bar graph i will take a departure to bar graph if there is a time i will come back to doing a couple of sets back again on the tables because tabular representation of data is one of the very very important way of representing the data when it comes to any of the management entrance exams i'm not saying that other graphs won't come but table always dominates solid table always dominates is a table graph always dominates all right compared with any other graph okay let's keep that in mind let's keep that in mind so what we'll do is we'll quickly go to that but bar graphs now we will analyze something about the bar graphs then we will come back then we will come back to the table if there is a time towards the end so let's take a look here let's take a look at this data so all of you are comfortable using the bar graph very simple data here so numbers also have been written there please go through this set friends please go through this set all of you go through this set okay what i'll do is i will remove the video or i'll remove my image there so that you will be able to read the questions properly
Okay, this is a simple question based on observation. Simple question based on observation. So what is this? All right, now this is all right, what is this data about? This data is about the total sales. Basically, we are talking about the sales of all right, now various brands. Again, the word is various, talking about four of them. That does not mean that four is the four all right, now these are the only four companies operating in India. In India, no, there are various brands. Author is interested in this analyzing the analyzing the sales of these four brands. So for, for these brands, what are those? The MI, Samsung, etc. So you can say that MI is three lakhs. All right, MI is three lakhs. Samsung, all it knows the revenue of Samsung is 3.5 lakhs. 3.5 lakhs. Journey is two lakh. Journey is 2 lakh, Apple is 1.8 lakhs mobile phones respectively in the given period. All right, in the given period that 17 18 cycle, so north, south, east, west in four zones. He has put this to perspective. His question is simple take a look at the question. Take a look at the question which company, which means there are four brands here, four companies here, out of which company has sold the minimum number of mobile phones. All right, now minimum number of total sales. It's not a sales revenue piece, right? To sales, sales in terms of what? Number of pieces being sold. Number of pieces being sold, the pricing depends. All right, because it's a company, there are a lot of brands within MI. So therefore, all right, now how many pieces are sold? That's what he's talking. Okay, his question is what? Which company has sold the minimum number of mobile phones in any zone among the given companies? Any zone among the given companies. Obvious answer is Apple. All right, within no time, you'd have marked it. Simple. You look at the smallest value of the percentage in this chart nine percent that's the smallest value nine percent hey look at the smallest dollar now look at the look at the company which sold the minimum number of pieces apple minimum number of pieces apple and both are for apple the smallest percentage value is coming for apple and the number of pieces sold by apple is the least among the given four companies therefore the smallest percentage of the smallest base nine percentage of 1.8 lakhs where 1.8 lakhs will be smaller it will be the smallest value therefore you made the decision because author is not even asking you to calculate tell me what is nine percent of 1.8 lakhs he is not even questioning that he is simply saying that are you observant enough about the data what kind of numbers are being used here if you are just observant about the data you are done with your concept you are done with your answer absolutely you are done with your answer that simple one so therefore what the point here is you got to get alert to the stimulus what the kind of data require what is the day kind of data presented there all right i just have to whenever i look at this particular question you got to understand that okay authors speak like this they may be giving the smallest percentage and they may be giving the smallest base and there may be a question which is created on that there may be in all likelihood they are checking our smartness based on these particular parameters because the exam also has to test reasonably our smartness smart skills all right therefore they will be all right so the trained mind will look for such data trained mind will look for data knowing that they will create such questions knowing that they create that questions the thought process that expectation management has to be done that's a point there the thought process should be there or that expectation has to be built in within us all right knowing that okay they create questions of this particular type okay good you got the idea here let's go to the next one look with every question i'm giving you some briefing there some kind of idea there okay take a look at this question friends It's a simple calculation question. All of you do this. All of you do this. I expect that, okay, you would be able to do this calculation. Push your pencils. Quickly get to the number there. There is nothing new to learn in this question. Quickly get the answers. Okay, you'd have got the answer by now because this should not take more than 30 seconds. Okay, what I do, I'm doing the lakhs in terms of 1000. 3 lakhs is nothing but 300,000. 3.5 lakhs can be written as 350,000. I can write as 350,000. Just for calculation sake, I'm writing it like that. That's it. I want all it. The author is given in lakhs. I convert conveniently to thousands. I'm saying the thousands. Okay, I'm not writing for others because I'm interested in MI and journey. Oh, MI and journey. I'm interested in these two. Okay, MI where guys? MI in north. MI in north. What is the MI in north? 20% of 300. MI in North is how much? 20% of 300,000. All right, I'm talking in terms of 1,000. Author is given in lock, but I'm converting into 1,000. Okay, 20% of 3,000, how much? 60. 
Right, 20 percent of 3000 is 60. All right, now 60,000 units. Okay, keep it 60. The value wise number wise 60. Okay, and then Gioni Invest. I got to calculate Gioni Invest. Good. What is Gioni Invest? I'll go to West and then Gioni. Gioni is nothing but 27 percent. You are saying that 27 percent of 200,000. 27,000 percent of this, which is nothing but how much? 54. Okay, therefore, already he's saying that okay, more than now look at that here. All right, now more than mobiles, more than, more than whatever comes after than. I told you in the percentage already, whatever comes after than should be in the denominator. What should be in the denominator? Therefore, Gioni invest. What is Gioni invest? 54. Therefore, 54 should be in the denominator. 54 should be in the denominator good so therefore what is the numerator more how much more here 54 to 60 how much more six more all right well, six more yeah my six more therefore six divided by 54 one by nine yeah, what is one by nine 11.11 percent simple question 11.11 percent i just thought that okay in the percentages we spoke about the importance of the word than all right we spoke about the importance of the word than just thought of reminding you about with this uh, reminding you about the importance of than with respect to this particular question right now off is important than is important the keyword off in percentage the keyword than in percentage all right the key keyword two in ratio see these are the keywords all right now this will be used all right now throughout our applications therefore i need to be mindful about them this should not go out of my mind that's an important thing there i should not get all it i should i should not take them out of my mind okay the other thing is what convert like this conveniently make it 300000 all right make it 300000 if it is given in lakhs hey, can i write it as 300000 why not you can write it as 300000 you can write it as 200000 why Car percentage calculation becomes easier instead of calculating 20% of 3 lakhs and writing it in decimal place right it has 300,000 all it now it's the same same number well it's the same number can I write the lakhs 2,000 you can write conveniently you can write and you can close the answers right I look at this question it's the next question beautiful question really beautiful question think about it quickly get me the answer it's a beautiful question Yeah. Okay, you're not done by now. In which you see, because it's a cache memory. That's what I'm calling it as a cache memory. See, as you start working with the set, you develop the familiarity. As you start working with the set, you will develop the familiarity. All right, you are going to develop a familiarity as you start working with that particular set. See, in the last all right, in the last question, I wrote the, the, the numbers for you there. I wrote these numbers. All right, I already wrote 300 and 200 here. I wrote those particular numbers for you. Right? We already we already talked about it. 300. 200 we talked about it all right we talked about it therefore all right now so if you just observe this all right that 300 200 that's a cache memory all right therefore one look at it you know that your answer is north all right one look at it you know that your answer is going to be north all right your answer is going to be north you may say how how it's going to be north all right now so because so more than well, what is this question more than one brand sold the same number of mobiles more than one means what at least two brands at least two brands sold the same number of mobiles that is happening in the north this is 20 and 30 why yamai has sold 300 thousand and journey has sold 200,000 it's in the inverse ratio basically it will be in the inverse ratio now what do you, what do you mean by this 20% of 300 will be same as 30% of 200 same year all right now 20% of 300,000 all right 300 will uh, will be equal to calculation wise is also equal to 30% of 200 we already know that inverse ratio all right because they look at the quantities of MI all right how much MI and Samsung have sold so MI all right the quantity number of pieces 300,000 and 200,000. All right, two and 300,000 and 200,000, right? Yeah. So, therefore, all right, what is the percentage value here, friends? This is 20% and this is 30%. Therefore, naturally, the product will match. Naturally, product will match. They'll be inversely proportional. This and this will be inversely proportional. All right, inversely proportional. If you understood, because I talked about this in the proportionality, product has to be constant, inversely proportional. Otherwise, also, your cache memory would have worked. Your cache 
memory would have worked. You already wrote these numbers and these numbers are standing out. They are inviting you because your cache memory has already built. Your cache memory has already built. Already, this is the first question. You will not do it. But through the through the discussion, you will understand that, man, it's a cakewalk. It's a cakewalk because you already noticed those numbers. It's already there at the it's already there in your mind. Therefore, you will immediately reflect it. So, point here is what? There are some questions. In the beginning, if you do, they will may appear trickier. But through the course of the action, those questions will become easier because on that particular set, you will be spending 5 to 10 minutes. Technically, any DI set you will be spending 5 to 10 minutes. All right, 5 to 10 minutes. It's a very easy set, easy kind of exam you're writing. DI in NMAT kind of exam. 5 minutes you will finish one particular set, right? Yeah. But if it is a CAT kind of or CAT kind of exam that you are taking, sometimes a DI set may take up to 10 minutes. The point is here is what? So you don't have to do them in the order. It is not about first question first and then I'll do the second question. Fine. If there are four questions on that particular set, you do the most easiest question first. You start building the concept, you start building uh, building the numbers or about the particular set. Once you start building the gathering that information, some of the tricky questions that you read before may become easier as you go along. As you, as you go along. That's a point you need to understand as well. These are the small things you got to practice when you are practicing the DI friends. And even in fact, while you are doing the applications, you got to keep these things in mind. Okay, good. I hope all of you understood this inverse proportionality out here. You got the point there. You got the point there. Look at this another beautiful question. Another beautiful question. Very beautiful question. Nice learnings. Beautiful question. Work out. Work on this quickly. Right, this is time. You might have done it by now. Right, I'm sure you might have done it by now. Yeah, let's take a look at this. Let's do this together. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so what he's asking, he's saying that, okay, how many instances are there? Only well, technically, technically, how many instances are there? There are four instances here. Another four year, another four year, another four year. Technically, there are 16 instances. Out of 16, okay, there are 16 instances. Out of these 16 instances, how many instances are there where a brand has, which means a, a brand has sold, a company has sold more than 70,000 mobile phones in any zone. Zone-wise, more than 70,000. All right. Now, the idea is the 70,000. Author is talking in 70,000. So, why don't you also talk in 70,000? We can talk in 70,000. Yamai. So, Yamai, how many thousands, friends? Yamai has sold how many? 300,000. Okay. So, similarly, already you can talk about the Samsung. All right. Yes. All right. Now, Samsung. Samsung has sold how many thousand? 350,000. Here, 353, 3.5 lakhs is nothing but 350,000. All well, right, likewise, you can write for every other number, every other number. Okay, you may say that, okay. So, therefore, Gianni, how much? Gianni is nothing but, well, Gianni is nothing but 200,000. Similarly, last one, all well, right, last one, Apple. Apple, how much? 180,000. That's what they saw. Now they are saying that okay, in how many zones it is 70,000 or more. Okay, what you do is even all it now, one way of dealing with this is you find out 70,000 is what percent of the 300,000. 70,000, you are talking anyway in thousand, 70,000 becomes 70. 70 divided by 300. 70 divided by 300. 70 divided by 300, 7 by 3. 7 by 3 is how much, friends? 2.33. All right, therefore, it is nothing but 23.3 percent. 70 divided by 300 is nothing but 23. percent three percent all right now that's what you'll be writing there all right 23 all right, to 23.3 percent okay that is 70 divided by 300 all right 70 divided by 300 good so that's the third so therefore go to mi now go to mi now wherever the percentage value is more than 23.33 percent because author said that more than wherever the value is more than 23.33 percent that is in go here go to mi mi is nothing but the blue legion all right blue legion the first one out because it is not more than 23.33 percent in because it's 25, 
in because it is more than 23.33 in because it's more than 23.33 therefore you are saying that for mi there are three instances which are in my favor mi has in four zones there are four instances for mi out of which three of them are in my favor okay we didn't get this let's do for samsung similarly let us do for samsung here let's go to samsung so you find out 70000 becomes what percentage of 350 therefore 70 divided by 350 70 divided by 350 is 20% i already taught you how to do this percentage calculation should not be a problem at all. Right? Now this is nothing but 20%, 1 by 5, right? 20% there. So 20%, okay, how many? Right? Now find out all the numbers greater than 20%, friends. Find out all the numbers greater than 20%. For Samsung, what is the legend for Samsung? Red one. So first, this is, this is more, or right? it's more than 20%, more than 20%. This is out less than 20%. This is out less than 20%. Therefore, you are saying that two numbers are in my favor. Two numbers are in my favor. Go to Gianni. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to Gianni. So what is Gianni here? 70 divided by 208. All these are cake walk. All right. Now what is this? 35%. Therefore, for Gianni, 35%. 70 by 200 is nothing but 35%. Keep that in mind. So go to 35% and qualify the numbers. What is Gianni? The green legend. All right. Now let's go there. 35%. Hey, less than 35. Out. Less than 35. Out. Less than 35. Out. Less than 35. Out. Therefore, zero. So you are saying that from Zioni's perspective, zero are qualifying. All right, zero, that's zero are qualifying. Good. Let's go to the next one now. Let's go to the next one. What is the next one? Apple. Apple, 70 divided by 180. Let's go to Apple. 70 divided by 180. Nothing but 7 by 18. All right, 7, all right, 7 divided, 7 divided by 18. So 1 by 18 is nothing but 5.55. What is 1 by 18? Okay, 7 by 18, you might not know directly. No worries. You at least know what is 1 by 18. All right, one, what is 1 by 18? What is 1 by 18? 5.55%. 5.55%. Therefore, what is 7 by 18? Change to 7 by 18. Multiply by 7. All right, therefore, you will say that, uh, you will say that okay, that's 35, 38, 38. All right, now 38.85 percent. Precisely, if you want to understand, this will be 38.88 percent. No problem. Even if you don't know that directly, no worries. You'd have got 38.85 percent. That's also fine. Therefore, go to all right, all right. Now, therefore, let's go to all right. Let's 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 go to Apple. Let's find the numbers which are more than 38.88. 13 percent for Apple out, 40 percent in, 38 percent out. 9% out. Therefore, you say that one of them is qualifying. Together, how many are qualifying? Three instances for MI, two instances for Samsung, zero instances for Journey, and one instance for Apple. Together, there are six instances which are in my favor. Together, there are six instances which are in the favor. Okay. I hope all of you got the perspective. We are pretty simple proposition. I hope you are all enjoying this. So, how to do them? See, point here is what? Ran, you be proactive. Sometimes the proactive measures. You find out 70,000 means what percentage? In the sense, you know, this question can be done faster and better provided you get these percentages in your mind simple calculation that's where we learned the percentage fraction equivalent friends that's where we learned about percentage fraction it hardly takes get to get these numbers in your mind once you get these numbers in your mind then go back and check on this table then you go back and check on this table rather than you try to work individually for every problem all right you get these numbers all right which means you have the standard of measure in your mind with the standard of measure in your mind go back and look look at the numbers there. look at the numbers on the chart becomes easy to easy to deal with it all right, that becomes much more easier to deal with it. I hope all of you are getting the points here what I'm trying to make right now. So in every question, I'm trying to make one or the other point. All right, except in one or two questions. In every question, I'm trying to make a point there. I want you to hold on to those points. That's important. All right, I want you to hold on to those points. Well, here we go. Here we go. Another simple set. So, okay, what is the importance of this particular set? Getting these values, what I should be writing here. All right, getting these values is important. If you write this value wrong, sometimes you'll get a different answer. What I should be writing here? All right, now getting those values is important, friends. Sometimes they don't give the values there. Unlike the previous question. Now look at the previous question. The values are given. He said that, hey man, this is 20. All right, this is 45. This is 30. The values are given. The scale may be there. Scale may not be there. Sometimes the values are given. But sometimes what happens? The values are not given. So they are saying that, hey, are you sharp enough to make the right understanding of this particular figure? When you look at that, are you able to get the right figure out there? Okay, you understand them. You understand them. All right, rather than writing the question, I suggest all it right, now. So all of you take a minute, write the values here. What you want to write? What you want to write here? What is the number here? What is the number here? I want you to take quickly 30 seconds and fix these numbers, friends. Fix these numbers. Fix these numbers. Quickly fix those numbers. The chart is given. This is years. All right, now this is years. So here it is the values are given. Magnitude. Number of cat applicants are given. Find out how many applicants in each of those six years.
Hmm, yeah, I guess you would have written by now. So, okay, what I do here is, I'll let remove the four zeros consistently. Remove four zeros. Let's not have these four zeros. Let's make the scale. I'll let, let's make scale look like a scale of five, which means this is fine. This is 10. Four zeros, you keep it. When we have to answer, we'll answer using that four zeros. Whenever the absolute value is required, we'll use the extra four zeros. Otherwise, let's not use it. Okay, what is it here? 15. Let me call it as 20. Let me call it as 25. Now, these are the values that you are writing. Of course, the next one is 30, but there is no value there. I will leave it 25. Okay, so therefore, all it now, so each grid, all it, if there is a line, each grid can be divided into five portions. One, two, three, four. 4 and 5. That's how you can divide. Each grid you can say that, okay, this is 1 portion, this is 2 portion, this is 3 portion, 4 portion and 5 portion. Okay, what if something is right in between these 2 portion? Take it as 0 0.5, 2.5, something like this. You may say that this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4 and when it comes here, 5. All right, that can be the value of each grid. That's how you can understand this each grid there. So therefore, when you look at this particular one, you may say that hey, this is 70. All right, this value is going to be 17. It looks like two grid. All right, no, two units. It looks like two units. In your mind, you can divide this into five units. Therefore, it is two units there. It is two units. Hey, this is four units. Therefore, this is 90. You may say that this value is going to be 90. It is closer to four units. All right, it is close. All right, it is closer. All right, it is more than, all right, more than three units or three and a half units. All right, therefore, you may say that the best value to close that is about 90. All right, it looks like four is to one ratio, about 19 there. Okay, go to 2014. 2014, you may say this is 22. You may call this as 22. Or you may call this as 22. You may say that 2015. Or 2015. You may call it as 18. Or this is 18. It looks like about three units. Three units is after 15. Therefore, you may call it as 18. Now, this is right in between. You may call this as 22.5. You may call this as 22.5. It is right in between. It is right in between 20 and 25. Right in between. You can see that. Or it is right in between. It is 22.5. Yeah, what about the next one? Or next one, I will take it as 24. All right, this I will take it as 24. All right, this can be the closer values so that you will get the right answers. All right, you can consider them as the much closer values. Therefore, you will get the answer there. Okay, keep this in mind. All right, now this kind of, all right, this kind of scaling is important. All right, this kind of scaling is important. Understanding them, what is in between, what is little shifted to the right, what is little shifted to the left. Therefore, writing these values, had you written 17, 19, 18, 22, all right, that's a good job. All right, now then you understand that, okay, you are pretty closer to the issue there, pretty closer to the issue. You may say that, okay, this 18, can I write it as 7.5? No problem. Somewhere around that, you are fine. All right, 17, 17.5, 18, somewhere around that, you are fine. All right, somewhere around that, you are fine. So, that it, you should be closer to the 0.5 kind of number. You should be closer to the 0.5 kind of number. Otherwise, you will get very different answer there. Fine. Let's go to this question now. By what maximum percentage did the number of applicants change in between any two consecutive years? Author is asking about any two consecutive years. Now, look for the graph here, friends. Look for the graph. This is the sharp up. This is the sharp change. That's a sharp change. You may say that, hey, this is also a sharp change. All right, let's see. All right, now, which one? All right, now, you may say that, okay, this is also a sharp change. Okay, if that is the sharp change, that's a sharp change. This is the initial value. Now, this is the final value. How do you, if your answer is 2015, 2015, if you calculate, what is the initial value, guys? 22. What is the final value? 18. What is the gap here? 4. So, what is the percentage change? All right, what is the minus, minus 4? Change is positive or negative, does not matter. Therefore, what is the change? 4 divided by 22. Keep it. Okay, I am saying that 2016, do the calculation for 2016, friends. Do the calculation for 2016. What you are trying to say? Initial value? 18. Final value, 22.5. Okay, therefore, what is the gap between the numbers? 4.5. Good. So, therefore, you are saying that 4.5 divided by 18. 4.5 divided by 18 is how much? 25%. That's your answer. That's the best number recorded there. 25%. See, what you do? Look at the graph. Look for that sharp change, basically. Look for that sharp change there. All right, now, this is one sharp change you can expect. You may say, all right, that's, that's the sharpest change there. That's the sharpest change that you can expect there. So, once you understand that wherever the curve, the sharp, all right, now, it's moving very sharp ahead you understand that that's where your answer comes from that's where your answer comes from therefore you would have definitely spotted this gap definitely you spotted this gap and you know calculated no doubt you would have calculated using this okay a point here is be observant about the graph as well all right be observant about the way the lines are moving there get that knack get that knack get that knack so that you will be able to save the time okay i'm not saying that immediately you should develop but the point is you must develop there is no choice in the matter that's what you mean by the data interpretation graph interpretation otherwise what is there to interpret in the graph there is nothing more to interpret in the graph. The sharp curves, or the sharp increase, the sharp decrease. This is what you are going to interpret in the graph, right? Interpret in the graph. Well, here, let's go to the other one. Let's go to the other one. Let's take a look at this question. 30 seconds, close it. I wanted to close this question in 30 seconds. 
challenge yourself do it faster last 4 5 minutes we are done with the class do it right you got the stimulus 2017 and 12 is what you need to understand okay you are here 2012 this was the number 2012 you said that 17 followed by what of course four zeros keep that in mind that was 17 okay 17 what did you say this number is 24 you said that man that is going to be 24 there you said that is 24 okay so but this 17 is there here also till 17 whatever is true that is true okay what is this question only 2.5 percent of the total number of applicants get admission in top 20 colleges 2.5 percent of applicants good then how many more number of students get admission in top 20 how many more the question is more extra more all right in 2017 when compared with 2012 2012 there are 17 followed by four zero that is one lakh seventy thousand people wrote 2017 two lakh forty thousand people wrote that's a meaning there okay but these 17 knowledge now whatever is this 17 knowledge seven one lakh seventy thousand one lakh seventy thousand same as this one lakh seventy thousand therefore no more no more is going to come the more factor is applicable only here therefore 17 to 24 7 knowledge now 7 all right 17 to 24 what's the gap between them 7 the gap is 7. But 7 followed by what? 4 zeros of course. 4 zeros. Now I have to calculate 2.5% of this number. I have to calculate 2.5% of this particular number. What is 2.5%? 2.5 divided by 100. 2.5% of this number. This is what I am supposed to be calculating. Done. All it done. All it you got your answer there. All it you got your answer there. 7, 2 and half times. All it that is nothing but 17.5. Therefore 1750. Well, you got your answer as 1750. Pretty simple question. Well, a pretty simple question. You just have to understand that. How do I just quickly put the numbers to perspective? Numbers to perspective. Okay, another one. Do with this, guys. Okay, you are all of you have got this simple one there. Another one, simple one. Please get the answer. Get the answer fast. Okay, I guess all of you got that, right? Okay, so 2015, what is the number that you consider for 2015? 18. What's the number you consider for 2017? Because 15 to 17, what is the number you consider here? 24. What is the number here you consider here? 24. 24 followed by some zeros. Now look at this here. Look at this. Every year, 30% of applicants are girls. Every year, 30% are girls. Therefore, he's saying that what is the percentage increase in the number of girls? Well, it naturally, percentage increase is nothing but the percentage increase in the base. Percentage increase in the base. It's a it's a function of base now. Why? Because the proportion remains same. It is 30% of every number, 30% of this 18 and 30% of this. Therefore, what, what is the calculation that I need to be doing here? I'll be doing 30% or I'll be doing the percentage increase in the base. That is going to the percentage increase in the number of girls who are taking this particular paper. 18 is the initial value. 40, 24 is the final value. Okay, what is the percentage increase? There is an increase of 6 on the initial value. 6 by 18. Nothing but 1 by 3. That is 33. 0.33 percent i hope in case you did not get what i'm trying to say now listen to me carefully listen to me carefully assume that the boys and girls in a class forget this i'll give a simple analogy to this the boys and girls in a class there is a class there is an intake to this particular class assume that 60 people are there in that particular class all it in that all it now 20 20 of them are boys 40 of them are girls assume that there are 60 people in that particular class all right 60 people in this particular class okay let me take 100 only let me make your life simpler to understand. 100 people out of which 40 are boys and 60 are girls. That is 40% are boys and 60% are girls. Nothing but 40 and 60 are. Okay, next what happened is they made the intake. Listen carefully. All right? They made the intake. All right? They make the intake as 150. 
they made the intake 150 but they decided that the proportion of boys and girls are going to remain constant the proportion of boys and girls are going to remain constant hey, what do you mean here the boys were 40 percent here the boys girls were 60 percent now they said that okay here also all it now the boys and girls are going to be same 40 percent and 60 percent very good so 40 percent of this is going to be boys which means 60 people 60 percent of these are going to be girls therefore this is going to be 90 now look at this guys whatever is the percentage increase here 60 people went on to become 90 people what is the percentage increase 50 percent it's because of the base only the because base is increased by 50 percent therefore if you maintain the number of boys and girls in the same proportion so proportion which means just like here 30 percent are always going to be girls likewise so if you maintain the same proportion of boys and girls so naturally whatever is the base change that is going to be the change in the number of girl applicants as well or a number of girl applicants as well that's what i was trying to say because you anyway fix that for both the years 15 and 17 it is going to be 30 percent girls then where is the question of percentage increase coming from the percentage increase is coming from the base value base value the bases are changing therefore the number of girl applicants are changing the proportion remained 30 percent but the base has changed therefore in this question what you should have done once you understand the crux of this question you will find out the percentage change in the base you will understand the percentage change in the base all right that's what you will be doing you will not find out how many girls were here how many girls will here that's a waste of time you will simply find out the percent or you will only simply simply find out the percentage change in the base itself base itself because the because the proportion of boys and girls remained same every year every year all right say 70 percent boys and 30 percent girls that remained same therefore what you are looking at you are looking at the change in the base itself all right now these are the simple ideas that you need to develop all right, these are the simple ideas you need to develop there okay here we go with one last question okay that's done i guess we are done it's a similar question then done pretty much all right pretty much done i hope all of you got the basic idea behind this particular graphs sure wait for them all the graphs are not over next lecture also i'm going to deal with the graphs next to next lecture also i'm going to deal with the graphs all right i'll be dealing sufficient number of lectures and graphs about three lectures i'll be dealing on graphs so what you do meanwhile is go back and strengthen your percentages and ratios and some of your calculations through this particular week if you have understood that okay i'm not getting the calculations faster please go back to the percentages because a lot of techniques are involved on the percentages here your percentages concept has to be clear if you really want to do well on the di point number one all right second thing that you got to do is get your calculation drills correct if you are feeling that the calculations the numbers are not speaking to me the numbers are pretty passive to me i have uh, numbers are not active only when i'm looking at the numbers so passivity can be because you are not using you, you may be using more of your calculator so therefore your mind is very distant from numbers all you got to do is consciously sit for 15 minutes do some addition subtraction multiplication or whatever it is or every day for about half an hour practice about two to three di sets two to three di sets simple di, di sets it could be because the focus is a little bit on calculation don't try to do the difficult di sets then you will not learn the calculation do simple di sets where you look at the numbers and start making the decisions or it go back and try to take a look at this particular video because through every particular question and through every set i try to give some inputs to you how you got to be looking at the questions how you got to be looking at the data given in this particular questions go back there or it now ensure that already you internalize the points that i have made once you Internalize the point you have made. Your platform is well set. Already you are well poised to move to the next level of next level of understanding. Right? Yeah. Wait for me. I will come back with the next lecture on the other type of graphs. So while we are doing those particular graphs, again we'll focus a little bit on calculation and also we'll focus upon certain certain jargons that are used in the DI. We'll also focus upon those kind of jargons. Okay. For now, that is it from my side. Okay. I will see you in the next lecture. Bye till then. Stay blessed.